we also created uh, uh, parking areas for uh, bikes, uh, which are safe, so you can be reassured. And we do uh, the maximum to develop uh, mass transportations. We have a uh, river shuttle uh, on the Adur River since uh, August uh, 10, so the people can come to uh, the to the marina, uh, and from there they can take either a bus or the shuttle bus to come here, or they can even walk or or, or ride a, ride a bike. So they can use a, you can use a soft uh, means of transportation. I can answer any question, questions you may have, but please, uh, we can assure you that we're very, very happy to welcome you here. And uh, I wish you a, a nice evening and a, a very interesting days in the this week. Thank you, Mr. De Keka. Uh, invite our general manager, Florent Marcoux, to join us. He helped us as a, a band, uh, band leader for these uh, four days and uh, year round. Oh. Thank you. Mr. De Keka, if you're very happy to welcome us, we are also very happy to be here. It's a, a great place here. Uh, this ocean pavilion is great. Uh, and with the competition uh, going on now, we're very close to the DNA of uh, Surf Rider. Um, dear elected officials, my dear friends of the uh, great Surf Rider family internationally, uh, for those who don't know, we're, we're very happy to have with us our colleagues from Surf Rider US. Everything started from there before Surf Rider Europe. This our CEO here. Uh, we had uh, a delegation from Surf Rider Japan. Our friends from Surf Rider Morocco will join us tomorrow, so we're very happy. And dear f our founders, uh, Tom Curran, uh, he should be here or should be here soon. Uh, the general uh, manager of Surf Rider, as a general manager of Surf Rider Europe, I'm very happy to launch this ocean pavilion with you in this great venue. First, I would like to thank uh, people and explain why this event and uh, what will happen. So I would like to thank the City Hall of Anglet, but also the partners of uh, this event. Of course, the European Commission, through the Life Operating Grant, they're supporting us. Benedict Carmier was supposed to, from the Commission, couldn't be with us. As a partner, I would like to thank the Ministry of Environment. We, we work with them, and they, they enable us to have a constructive talk with uh, the uh, ocean uh, issues. Uh, Thursday, uh, we will have the Minister Elizabeth Bond, the Ministry of Environment, in our premises. Also, our local partners, with, with whom we've been looking, uh, working for a long time, the Regional Council of, uh, of Aquitaine and the uh, Water Agency at Dour Garonne. The general manager should be with us. We also have uh, partners, uh, uh, supports uh, uh, who are fighting with us. There are other actors of the civil uh, uh, sector, the Platform Ocean and Climate, that which we co-founded in 2014. They are well represented here. Break free from plastic, with whom we are uh, fighting at the world globally not only in Europe, but it's in the national movement. And the, the Cisatrix, Cisatrix. Uh, and finally, the board sports uh, sector, which is important for the culture, the identity, the origin of self-writer. We were with WSL this morning. 
to uh, collect ways to raise awareness on this issue. And Eurosima coordination uh, with whom we are working a lot too. And Christophe Sellier is here with us. A few words to tell you more about uh, the Ocean Pavilion. Why? Um, a few days before the start of the G7 summit. Uh, to, to say, to repeat uh, what our president is saying, the, the surfer is the only uh, um, uh, fish that can say when he gets out of the water, he can tell what he saw. So we want to be the spokesperson of the ocean and its users. Since the origin, we've been uh, uh, angry surfers, not only surfers, but people who try to speak for the ocean, its issues and its uh, challenges. We are been doing this uh, with everybody, each person, each individual through awareness campaigns, education, for those who can come tomorrow at our headquarters, uh, you will see the campus uh, space dedicated for this uh, type of activities. Also, we have to to talk uh, to um, to talk with the decision makers. The, this is true at the local, national, European, and international level. We've been doing that for a very long time. We did it at COP21 in Paris. This was a unique uh, opportunity to talk for the ocean. We did it with the Ocean and Climate Platform. After 20 years of international negotiations around climate change, finally, the ocean is part of the Paris Agreement. So we have to continue this work. And this is what we want to do through this uh, uh, ocean pavilion a few days before the launch of the G7 summit. OK, uh, but the priority uh, of the summit is the fight against inequalities. But at Surfrider, we underestimate the connection between ocean protection and fight against inequalities. Why? Because the ocean doesn't know, uh, maybe not you here, but in general, our uh, the population do not know the role that the ocean can play for uh, for men and for cl the climate, of course. I imagine that uh, many of you already know it, but it's uh, it absorbs CO two that we release to the atmosphere. It's also a source of oxygen. One breath out of two is due to the ocean. Uh, often, uh, when you say, how, why do can we breathe, you forget, you, you think about the green lung, but you forget the blue lung. So it's also a, a major source of well-being, of pleasure for those who are uh, water sports practitioners. It's also a source of energy, of, uh, of food. It's a source of employment development. Today, we are destroying it. We are uh, killing its biodiversity, the last report shows it. We can fear that the future GIEC report, which, which will focus, will show, will show the same thing. Beyond the, uh, the issue of destruction of the ocean biodiversity, uh, it's no longer a cli climate regulator. Therefore, uh, we, we, we know about the climate change and its impacts, erosion, submersion, floods, but also heat waves, which uh, lead to uh, many crises uh, uh, around the world. We all know it, these impacts of climate change, the consequences, uh, harm the most vulnerable populations. So we have to understand that there is a relationship between environmental protection, the ocean, and the fight against inequalities. This was to understand why we launched this initiative. Uh, 
what uh, what will happen. You you looked at the program. We are, we have four days, around four issues, uh, sports and sustainable tourism. That's for today. Tomorrow, ocean and biodiversity. Then ocean and plastic pollution. And Friday, ocean and climate. So you will have uh, the opportunity to 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 listen to experts, uh, NGOs, representatives, industry, uh, manufacturers. Together, uh, they they share their initiatives, uh, the issues, and the solutions. This way, we can inform each other and those who can uh, listen to us to show that there are solutions and what we can do. Beyond that, we have to uh, raise awareness, but we have to inform. So we will, uh, on Friday evening, we will uh, end with the ocean call. It's a declaration that will summarize the commitments of all the, the stakeholders. This, in this ocean call, we're going to uh, broadcast it and uh, and uh, and submit it to the G7 embassy in Paris so that the uh, world powers can realize that there are solutions that the civil society is ready and it's up to them to play to 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 do uh, what they have to do and to to uh, um, to act concretely we have about 40 organizations throughout the world who would support this call they represent uh, several million citizens uh, throughout the world. Don't hesitate to uh, relay it. It's uh, really a great opportunity to remind the world leaders that it's time to act. Thank you. Thank you, Florent, and thank you for having respected the uh, timing. I'd like to now invite Paul Mayer to come up to the stage. He is one of the ambassadors for Surf Rider, who is always present and has come from Brittany. And he, as a sailor, he knows the ocean better than I do. So the floor is over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm delighted to be here this afternoon with you. I joined Surf Rider's team 10 years ago and it's with great pleasure that I uh, speak on behalf of the whole community and show that Surf Rider is not just a group of surfers. It's all the different users of the ocean uh, in a shared combat. I uh, race around the globe on my own and that represents four times around the world, about 10 uh, transatlantic races. I race for under uh, company flags. I uh, race for Massif, uh, for the SME BTP group. And this year I'm lucky uh, to race f uh, with a uh, Samantha, a, a British uh, sailor. And we do this for uh, 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 cardiac uh, disease. I also represent IMOCA, which is an association of uh, racers who uh, take part in the Vendée Club, the, uh, and I'm the administrator, one of the trustees uh, for this. And the reason I talk about this is a year ago we got together and we wanted to to do a little bit more, we created a, a, committed, a committee, we hired uh, somebody and we tried to think about how our sport can evolve in the future. We are aware of the um, impact we can have and the role that we may be able to play. We uh, will be able to provide solutions. Uh, we work on four axes. Uh, in sport, we don't realize the events. Uh, for us, it's the uh, uh, 
departure village and which has a, a terrible carbon footprint. So we also have a committee on the scientific aspect because many skippers have sensors on board which could show the true state of the oceans today, whether in terms of CO2, acidity, plankton or plastics. We realize that with the latest results, uh, even in the most isolated places in, in the seas, there is plastic present. And I think that in general, sportsmen and women uh, can play a role in making people aware of these issues. Sometimes we have to move the lines, and I think it's great that Surfrider, I'm, I'm, I'm not the only Surfrider, there are many Surfrider uh, uh, ambassadors, other sports people from different sports, um, uh, football, uh, windsurfing. It is good to uh, mix everybody together with different uh, cultures. I, I, it means that people are able to take new ideas away with me. I'm lucky in my job, uh, sailing around the world on my own, uh, on, on a boat. We have time to think, to ask ourselves questions, and this enables us to uh, become aware of the fragility of the Earth. We realize that when we cross the Atlantic, it's not actually as big as you think. What you don't see, uh, you think, is not important. There are plastic continents in the sea. We cannot just eternally say it doesn't matter, it's somewhere else. As people don't, most people don't sail. They are unexplored places. And so in people's imagination, we can tell them anything they want to hear. We say there's a plastic continent and the clothes going to get cleaned up with super technology. That's not really true. The plastic uh, fragments into small pieces. And there are areas where there are lots of, well, there's lots of plastic in the water. And it's not just technology that's going to enable us to save the oceans. We have to look at the problem at source to try to avoid uh, the plastic uh, entering the oceans in the first place, at least until we find other solutions. When I joined Surfrider, I uh, took part in uh, uh, events like this morning, and I quickly understood the role of Surfrider or Surfrider's other role which is to work, and I think this is very exciting, uh, to work with lots of different people. That means civil society, the economy, institutions, political parties. And I think today this is what's required for the solution. We need to be positive, work together, and come up with a solution and I think that we, if I think the rules are important as a sports person, it's easier for me, perhaps. If we are very lucky in our sports. We can change the rules very easily, and this is what we're trying to do to change our rules, to introduce uh, protecting the environment with the uh, 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 medium term aim. So for example, 100% uh, carbon boats built today, we can force people to say that in four years, we will have perhaps 10% uh, will be biosourced, and everybody is on the same at the same stage. Well, if we're surfing, for example, then in five years to say, all surfboards must be uh, uh, not made out of a resin, but something else. If everybody's doing the same thing, then that's it will be successful. 
we, we need rules and that's a, a message I want to get over. And finally, I, I want to, I, I ask a lot of questions about, I think a lot about how we can get people involved. It's not easy. It's a question we all ask. We're all convinced, all of us here in this room. But how can we uh, solve the problem? Some people paying attention and others not. I think the key is uh, passion. When I think about my own uh, uh, past, there are many examples of people who didn't like school, but thanks to a passion, people we managed to work to get resources and achieve an objective. And I think if we all manage to do this, we will be able to make people passionate. This requires education, it, it, it requires children. We Children have to see nature, they have to live in nature, and when you live with it, then you want to protect it. And so I think we have to get out in the open a bit more often, explain to people, and that's the, the key to this transition. And finally, by asking lots of questions, we can see that something's happening in society. Society wants to change, but there's a lot of frustration. And people say, uh, look at ways how to pollute less. We have to remain positive. If we end up looking inwards, then if we become introspective, then it won't, we won't be successful. We need to, uh, to dare to change the system, dare to change the rules. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, and thank you for your applause. I'd now like to invite Julian I'd like to invite up to the stage the first moderator for the a debate about surf, the surf industry and eco-responsibility. Welcome to the Ocean Pavilion. Thank you so much for joining us today. Just a heads up that I am going to be speaking in English, just in case that you want to switch to, uh, I think it's channel number one. Uh, but so my, my name, number two, I'm sorry. So my name is Julia Vera. I have the pleasure of uh, facilitating the very first of the two panels that we're going to be celebrating today, looking at the relationship between the ocean sports and sustainable tourism. As you know, throughout the Ocean Pavilion, we're going to be reflecting on global transboundary challenges that are affecting the ocean, uh, climate change, ocean acidification, pollution, uh, over tourism. But we're also going to be looking more, uh, especially I would say, to innovative solutions and to positive paths of action that we can take to prevent and to mitigate the negative effect that those challenges are having on marine species, marine ecosystems, marine habitats, but I would say also on our own ability to benefit from, from a healthy ocean.
how do we ensure a healthy ocean? I believe it's maybe the overarching uh, framing question that we're going to be addressing through the Ocean Pavilion and what paths of action do we want to upscale to global leaders to address this challenge. Now in this very first panel we're going to be looking more specifically at the surfing industry and the relationship or its commitment to a healthy ocean. Is the surfing industry really committed to a healthy ocean? What actions are currently underway? Are we doing, are we doing enough? Uh, can we do more? What are some of the barriers that we can address to make sure that we have uh, a, a stronger impact and that we can uh, achieve uh, that objective of sustain a healthy ocean. In my personal opinion, I think the surfing industry has a huge stake at preserving a healthy ocean, only if because some of the most urgent challenges that are addressing the ocean are also having a profound impact on the users of the surfing industry, on, on surfers all over the world. Uh, we know that a decrease in water quality also means increasing health risks for surfers, for example, from those uh, uh, increasing uh, antimicrobial resistance, uh, also habitat destruction both by pollution or by development of coastal infrastructure means a loss of safe playground for surfers. But on the other hand, I think the surfing industry is also in, a, in an extraordinary position to contribute with solutions. First of all, by leading with the example, uh, showing that it's possible to engage in cleaner production, showing that it's possible to deliver surfers with uh, alternatives for those surfers that want to make a responsible use of the ocean with a minimum uh, environmental footprint. But I would say maybe also using the educational power of the industry to advance ocean literacy and to engage more and more citizens in preserving the ocean. Surfing is becoming a really popular sport, so how can we make sure that all surfers uh, step up to the challenge of sustaining a healthy ocean? Uh, these are, I think, some of the, of the questions, of the reflections that we're going to be uh, uh, going through. Uh, we want to take the opportunity of this channel to look at of this uh, panel to look at, to look at some of the initiatives that are currently underway, but also at the at the challenges ahead. And to do so, we have the fortune of having a fantastic uh, panel of guest speakers. We have first of all Christophe Seya. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, Christophe. Uh, he's the chief executive officer of Eurosima, the European Surf and Action Sports Industry. Manufacturers Association. We have Djibou de Soltre. Uh, he's chief editor of Surf Session and head of the Row for the Planet project. Really looking forward to hear more about that project. We have Pierre Pommier with us from NOTOX. Uh, Pierre is a robotics engineer. And NOTOX, as you probably know, it's a surfboard manufacturer that is committed to producing ever more responsible and sustainable surfboards. So looking forward to hear more about that as well. And we have Florian Paluel with us. Florian is the uh, Transparency and Sustainability Manager of Picture, which is a company that manufactures uh, organic clothing. So thank you so much for being with us. Uh, really looking forward to our discussion and to your contributions. As you know, and as it has been said, all the discussions that we'll be having today in this panel and subsequent panels as well are going to be feeding the ocean call that the Surfrider Foundation will be presenting to the world leaders attending the G7. So uh, an extraordinary opportunity to make your voice, to make our voice heard in support of the ocean. So we're going to get on with the program right away. And I would like to invite you first to a first round of, uh, of thoughts uh, on your relationship with the ocean. So in your opinion, how is the surfing industry connected to a healthy ocean? And what is it that you're doing from your respective roles, from your respective organizations uh, to contribute to a healthy ocean. We'll do the first round, uh, three to five minutes per speaker. I believe we have some colleagues from the Surf Rider Foundation that will let us know when you have two minutes left for your contribution. And we'll use this as the first round of uh, introductory comments. And should we start with you, Christophe? Yep. Très bien. Bonjour à tous. Merci, Julia. 
Good afternoon. Thank you, Julia. I take this opportunity to uh, to speak in French uh, clearly rather than roughly in English. So I'm in charge of Eurocima cluster, uh, the European. I have a short presentation, but I will be very fast because I want you to to focus. I'm not sure you can read everything, but I want you to hear my colleagues too. Eurocima was created in 1989. This is a quick slide about uh, our background, 99, by the major um, companies of the sector, international groups, uh, Quicksilver, and the major international brands uh, present in Europe. They wanted to, to get together to, to uh, appear as an industry and to, have, uh, uh, to be more attractive and uh, have more, more power. In 2005, the idea was to bring together surfing companies, but action sports uh, uh, in general. So in 2006, we were recognized as a cluster. This is uh, an official recognition from the local authorities. So based on the priority uh, uh, projects, we can have obtained support from the uh, local communities and the research center. We're not alone in our projects, but we can integrate a wider network and to have more influence. In 2010, uh, the snowboard uh, industry uh, was developing and we supported the creation of another cluster, which is called the Outdoor Sports Valley in Nancy. And, and now we merged all the members of the Outdoor Sports uh, Valley uh, and the members of Eurocima to have a, a stronger impact and a, a wider range of services for our members. Finally, since 2014, we added besides skates, uh, snowboard, uh, nautical uh, action sports. Uh, now we have members with standard paddle, uh, wakeboard, etc. I'm trying to go very fast. Uh, the partnerships, uh, uh, the institutions, uh, academics and training, we can and identify major projects. Uh, today, uh, uh, what, what, you want to know what is uh, the impact our impact on the ocean and our relationship with the ocean as a representative of the major companies, major manufacturers today uh, in, the, in the local area, it's about 4,000 direct uh, jobs, 200 members within uh, Eurocima, 1.9 billion euros uh, in, um, uh, in sales. Everything started. The first members, the major companies, did it because there was the wave in uh, the major uh, spot in Oscar and the international managers were surfers and they want they wanted to be close to the most the greatest uh, waves in Europe that's why they they decided to 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 settle their activities here and to enjoy their passion today all the companies can recruit uh, talents worldwide because these talents between the ocean and the mountain they can they are uh, uh, fans and they can practice their favorite sports and at the same time they can develop their uh, uh, their skills here so this is from the these waves that the industry got organized by preserving these uh, the waves and the ocean that we can, we will uh, uh, support the uh, the related economic development. Thank you, Christopher. My name is Florian Palwell. I work for Picture. I don't have a presentation. The brand, the brand was created in 2008 by three friends from Clermont-Ferrand with strong values around sustainable development and social commitment. It's, it was not uh, opportunistic after the brand was created like uh, can be done now, but it's something that is in our basic uh, values 
and the, there's a commitment from the whole company. Often when, when we talk about uh, sustainable development with the brands, you talk about recyclable, recycled products. We think that we need to have a global uh, uh, vision of the company. We talk about extraction of raw materials, about production, packaging, transportation, internal culture, marketing, logistics. So the basis of all that is that we would have less impact if we hadn't created picture, because all our activities have an impact. How do we work to to uh, to have a, a sustainable uh, development? We try to get away from traditional uh, production uh, uh, means in order to, to change them, to find alternatives that will uh, gradually become the standard and to, uh, to have a brighter future. How are we connected to the ocean? Personally, I come from Annecy, from the mountains, so the brand was was created in uh, in Clermont-Ferrand, so far from the ocean. But we, our main activity is a ski clothes, ski and snowboard, as a recycled clothes for uh, snow, uh, snowboard and skiing. What do we do in Annecy in the summer? We we come here to the Basque Country to. To practice uh, the sport, so we so that's when we started uh, uh, manufacturing wetsuits. So uh, this is uh, uh, ocean and mountains uh, suffer from the effects of uh, uh, climate change. Uh, we have a mission as the manufacturer, so we market products, and these products have to be uh, that have to be uh, as green as possible. So if I can talk to you today, not only to talk about the ocean, but in general as a global a playground, mountains, ocean, and outdoor, uh, how, what do we do to get out of the production models that no longer work? What? How do we create a new standard? That's it. Bonjour à tous, je m'appelle Pierre, donc je suis le CEO de Notox, donc c'est une jeune marque qui a été fondée en 2009 euh, au Pays Basque, ici à Anglette. Euh, donc ça a démarré euh, vraiment d'un constat assez précis, est on, on est une petite équipe, on est quatre, on est tous surfeurs. Et quand on a commencé, on s'est inquiété, euh, la première chose qu'on avait sous les pieds qui nous permettait de pratiquer, c'est nos planches. Et à vrai dire, au début, on ne savait pas exactement comment c'était fait, euh, de quoi il retournait, quel matériau, etc. Donc on a commencé à regarder tout ça d'un peu près. Et en fait, on a quand même vu que cet emblème, parce qu'il faut bien dire que si les planches n'existaient pas, il n'y aurait pas de surf, donc on parle quand même de, de l'objet iconique, euh, bah que cet emblème était quand même sérieusement malmené, parce que euh, non seulement les matériaux qui le composent sont vraiment tous très très dangereux, euh, toxiques pour les personnes qui les manipulent, et également euh, extrêmement polluants euh, quand ils sont éliminés euh, en, comme déchets industriels ou même euh, comme déchets en fin de vie. Donc on a commencé à auditer euh, quelques ateliers de fabrication qu'il y avait euh, ici au Pays Basque et également à s'intéresser à ce qui se faisait en Asie euh, à l'autre la, bout de la planète. Et on est vraiment euh, tombé sur des choses pas sympathiques. Donc euh, des artisans qui détruisent leur santé, euh, des déchets qui sont euh, la plupart du temps pas traités, euh, au mieux enfouis dans des bonnes conditions, mais rien de vraiment très satisfaisant. Et pour autant, euh, le les planches de surf, c'est quand même 2 500 000 planches qui sont vendues chaque année euh, dans le monde. Ça concerne 20 000 artisans dans le monde, donc répartis euh, autour de côtes, donc que ce soit aux, euh, enfin, un peu partout, quoi, en Amérique, Europe, parce qu'on surfe partout sur la planète. Et en fait, cette activité génère quand même 15 000 tonnes de déchets industriels toxiques qui sont donc éliminés près de ces côtes et qui, euh, on a du mal à penser que ces déchets-là n'ont aucun impact sur la qualité des eaux, euh, des océans, surtout compte tenu de la difficulté des, de retraitement de ces matières-là. Euh, Paul parlait tout à l'heure des, des matériaux composites des bateaux. On se retrouve dans le, même type de, euh, dans le même type de déchets, ce qui est quand même particulièrement euh, problématique. 
Donc au début, on a surtout travaillé sur la substitution euh, des matériaux, donc aller chercher euh, des nouveaux procédés, des matériaux d'origine euh, naturelle, euh, d'origine renouvelable ou issus du recyclage, de manière à réduire drastiquement euh, l'impact euh, de nos jouets. Et également euh, d'essayer d'être un miroir le plus exemplaire possible sur, euh, pour euh, essayer de motiver justement les, les pratiquants et également changer euh, leurs pratiques. Ensuite, euh, au sein de l'entreprise, on a vocation à vouloir euh, étendre notre activité à l'étranger, mais on n'a pas du tout envie de le faire comme ça se fait aujourd'hui, c'est-à-dire en faisant voyager nos produits euh, dans des cargos ou par avion, etc. Ça ne nous semble pas très satisfaisant. Euh, du coup, on envisage plutôt d'exporter des procédés de fabrication et d'arriver à fabriquer localement ailleurs, ce qui va être euh, consommé localement ailleurs. Donc c'est des choses qui sont extrêmement compliquées pour une petite entreprise comme la nôtre. Mais euh, on y met toute notre énergie et on espère, euh, bah, par le biais de euh, nos actions quotidiennes, de notre travail, et également de nos interventions dans des journées comme celle-ci, euh, qu'on arrivera à convaincre des gens que, euh, effectivement, d'autres euh, modèles économiques sont possibles, ou, ou du moins d'autres manières de faire euh, sont possibles, même si elles sont difficiles. Ça deviendra nécessaire, donc autant s'y prendre le plus tôt possible. Bonjour. I, one of, I'm one of the uh, founders of Surf Rider Foundation, and my job as a journalist. Uh, and when we created Surf Rider, it was in 1990. And if I have to ask, uh, look at the question of what has the surf industry done for the ecology, I would say that. Uh, very little has been done. I can talk about my neighbors, but on a, on a scale of the entire industry, we, it's rather surprising to see the little that has been done, the little that has been thought about. Perhaps what, I, what I'm saying might sound a little bit harsh. But we are surprised that the largest surf company is still doing advertising with car uh, companies. And it's surf today. If surfing today has another message to get across, it's that of freedom, of pleasure from nature. And if we look at all, all the people who come and set up their businesses in the land and the Basque country, but they're not uh, seeing what's happening in nature, and that in terms of so, so in terms of a change of behaviour in the industry as a whole, this is very uh, weak indeed. It, you know, all of Patagonia, I was uh, able to see myself how the, the, how Patagonia in 2008 there was a financial crisis the surf business was in great difficulty and that time uh, Patagonia made 400 million dollars and today makes a billion dollars with the slogan if you don't need it don't buy it and so this is a message of hope because it means that the uh, for the consumers, for society, there's a real uh, expectation for change uh, in in the way we live. And it's a, a very promising sign to see that the, the, this, uh, uh, whilst the surf companies were all having uh, great difficulty, that they were uh, making profit. So I think that we personally, we began a, an association called uh, Row for Your Planners. And on the 6th of October, we started with the local association which went round France on bike to make people aware of global warming and the ecological stakes. And, and Seth Ryder held hosted the final stage in Biarritz. 
and so it was an event which took place in Biarritz, and we decided that we would uh, row every Saturday in until the G7 meeting. It's, it's a message of perseverance. It's not simply, uh, we weren't going to simply demonstrate when the uh, G7 arrived. And this message was to for forget the G7 and to look at, th at things ourselves. We, if we all individually get involved, then we can after three times, uh, you don't necessarily see plastic in the same light when you go to the supermarket. And there's another message which I think is very important, and that's the world of surf, which is legitimate when it talks about the environment and when it talks about the uh, origins of the sport, which came from Polynesia, one of the uh, greatest uh, maritime civilizations that the world has known. And in the counterculture of the 60s and 70s, uh, against the war in Vietnam, there was a true uh, ecological aspect to this. I remember I read when I was 14 years old a surf magazine because they were uh, committed uh, surfers. The ecology is part of surfing, except that surfers uh, actually get pleasure from nature. And so we need to give back to nature what it gives to us. And today it's calling for us to give uh, back. And surfers, people, hikers, anyone who takes advantage of nature should be the, f the, the leading uh, figures uh, in alerting people about uh, the dangers to the environment. There's not just only a legitimacy uh, for the world self to act on the environment, but it's our, our responsibility. And today, I think that we've still got a long way to go. Introduction, so I think you've touched words. Uh, I've heard passion being mentioned, I've heard commitment and values, I've heard preserving the waves, showing that the surfing industry, at least in, in spirit and in values, is completely aligned with that idea of preserving the ocean. Uh, we've seen examples of that idea being put into place through substitution of materials, reduce environmental footprint of surfboards. Um, but Pierre, you also mentioned that there are 2.5 million boards sold every year. That's, that's, it's a question of scale. And uh, you, you also mentioned that change is weak, that you wish that you'd see more action uh, through an industry that is going to become so powerful as the surfing industry. Um, so in, in your opinion, oh, I'd like to hear from the other uh, guest speakers as well, what do you think are the barriers that are preventing us from positively contaminating the rest of the surfing industry? Why don't we have more companies like Notox? Uh, investing in eco innovation. Why is eco innovation still uh, marginal instead of being, you know, the business as usual as it should be? Uh, how do you think? Where do you think are the problems? And maybe can you hint some of the possible actions that we could undertake to uh, break through those barriers? Uh, and maybe should we start the other way around this time? Yep. Dans ma critique, j'ai quand même un petit bémol à donner. Uh, in my criticism, uh, I should qualify what I said in the example of Patagonia, that 8 or to 10 percent of their uh, sales is uh, dedicated to communication. Uh, board sports in the late 70s, early 80s had everything to create. Board sports was uh, something completely new. There was nothing. There was no champion, no competition, no economy. So, to to we needed the major companies to to start. So, uh, companies such as Quicksilver, Bilagong, really created uh, something. 
at the same time, uh, Patagonia, uh, they were uh, mountain, uh, uh, they, they didn't have to communicate, they just gave money to associations, and since they were innovating in their, in their work, uh, that was their communication. That's the difference between the, the surfing companies that had to be working, uh, they had to create their, uh, their business, but also the uh, environmental sector. But in the early uh, 2000s, they didn't uh, work much. Uh, uh, they could have done more. I think that today, let's take everything from greenwashing to, to rebellion, be, because we have to raise awareness at all levels. And and everyone moves on at, at your own speed. And for this, it's an individual awareness. It's often related to an emotion, something you uh, you felt. Macron had his uh, um, uh, environmental ecologist. Uh, it's green uh, change this winter. So uh, the managers of the surf companies uh, they they have a, a four wheel drive, and then one day they will stop. They will they will have an. Uh, they will surf, uh, uh, they will go surfing with their bicycle. I don't know. But it will take time, but still, every, you, everybody does it at its own pace. <laughs> so every every each one of us has to act uh, where they are. That's uh, that's what we believe. Back to the question of the the barriers, the barriers to innovation, uh, to eco innovation. There are uh, two types. The 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 mind of the consumers. They have to make an effort to. To, to forget about the marketing they hear uh, year long. We are human beings, we are sensitive to that, and uh, we keep hearing that we have to buy that, so we finally buy it, even uh, even with, uh, just because we're tired or because it's uh, the style. So this is part of it. And the major board sports companies are very uh, powerful in this area. And when we have a, uh, a voice that's not as loud, it's difficult to be heard. Then there is an economic barrier. Uh, in the past few years, I've had no problem to talk with the managers of uh, major uh, uh, board sports uh, industries, uh, the managers in uh, uh, Asian countries, because many boards are made there. And we have to understand why most boards come from there. The cost of an Asian uh, board is about 100 euros. It's, uh, it's just the cost of the materials when it's made locally. So, And they are, you can find them in stores at 700, 900 euros. So the margin is huge, which is uh, dedicated to to uh, marketing, but also logistics, to transport the products, to uh, promote them in the stores. What's uh, what what what's uh, uh, what I don't like is the consumer pays a lot of money for a quality that is not there, and 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 with no environmental uh, quality, because you need to have margins, and that's a real problem today. The way we do things. Uh, margins are ridiculous compared to what's going on in the industry. So we we are away from all the the sale, traditional sales circuits, which uh, which are necessary to for the brand to to get known. Uh, so all the energy, all our financial resources in innovation, in the purchase of uh, materials that are more responsible because we do a life cycle analysis. We're um, very careful with all these aspects. So what we put in what, what we think is better prevents us from 
from communi communi commun communicating more about our products. Earlier, uh, I said that we should uh, uh, communicate on our processes. Our processes are uh, manufacturing processes were um, patented, but we have to train people in, uh, in the countries where they are manufactured to identify the, the alternative uh, materials to replace the in linen fiber in France or um, a cork. We should use other types of products to, to, uh, to have boards in the same uh, uh, in the same line. So it takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, and I, it's, I can understand that brands that can live with a, uh, with no cost, they don't want to make that, those efforts because it would cost them when today they're making money. So is that a reason for not doing it? I don't know. The future will tell. We still, we still have a small size company. We're still here, so we hope we will continue. I completely agree with you, Pierre. In the surf or outdoor industries, the business, the historical business models. We're done uh, traditionally with a purchase of um, raw materials. You made uh, um, the traditional way of uh, making uh, skis is uh, oil to create polyester and then make a ski jacket. So historically, all ski and snowboards uh, brands did uh, ski clothes that way. And with the oil industry, which exploded in the 70s and 80s, the prices were so low in this for these materials that there were huge margins to invest in uh, marketing and uh, uh, pay uh, sponsors, uh, writers, uh, advertising. When we started our brand, when they started the brand, they went away from the traditional uh, business models. That was the basis of our business model. And we wanted to accept to pay 30% uh, more for raw materials that was uh, recycled polyester, the same uh, fabric, but it made from plastic bottles. It's not conventional cotton, but uh, cultivated with pesticides. It's uh, uh, an organic cotton. So if we want to make uh, a t-shirt or a ski jacket, we pay a lot more for the uh, raw material than our competitors. However, we want to have the final public price. To, we want to. We have. To, we want to have the same uh, final price. We don't want. We don't want to penalize um, the final consumer. So, we have a much less, uh, much lower margin. So we have less marketing. So, if you see uh, the list of our riders, maybe you don't know them because it's not the top level. They're not. But. The product is its own marketing because it's very different from the other products that are identical in style and in identical in terms of price. But there is a really uh, an environmental plus. But we know that the consumer is not ready to pay more for a responsible product. There are many examples. I, come fr I came from ANSI by train. It's really not easy. I came by myself from ANSI, and I said, I'm not going to go uh, cocoa riding, uh, ride sharing, or uh, alone by car. So I said, I take the plane. I could do it in an hour and a half, and it was, it was uh, less costly. And the train solution, it takes nine hours, but, but it was more expensive. So I come here to talk about climate, so I'm not going to come by plane. And that's what I try to do in uh, everyday's life. But I, for any consumer who is not very committed, he's going to go by plane. He's going to, to be up. The thing, the problem is that the alternatives, but the, the solutions that are uh, good for the environment 
are alternatives and are not the standard. This is the issue. It's the same for the energy. We could have a, a, a contract with a power company and renew, renewable energies are more expensive than coal or oil or nuclear energy. When the when the good uh, environmental initiatives are the same price, uh, then there will be more commitment from the public at large. In 2019, it's not possible to have the wrong environmental choice because of the price difference. This is insane. This is where the public authorities and the governments have a major role to play to um, implement measures so that tomorrow the same trip will be the same price as the plane. People will remain opportunistic in terms of price, and they will go towards the train, and it will be profitable for everybody. And now we no longer have time to make everybody uh, um, committed. From what we see, uh, Oh, and we have to get ready uh, for the climate change. We don't have time to change the whole population. So we can influence uh, the consumption mode through major political measures is absolutely necessary for people to make the right choices. And it should be everybody's fight. So many industries uh, should uh, make efforts now Maybe it's an opportunity, <coughs> and maybe tomorrow anybody will buy their fleece jacket at Decathlon without knowing that it's made with uh, recycled polyester. They don't know it, but it will be beneficial for the planet. So you have to make the difference between the committed consumers and the public at large, which has to, they have to be influenced towards more sustainable and more environmental solutions. I'm very happy to be with people like Florian, Pierre, who are passionate and who work in companies whose DNA, which is about Patagonia before, there's a whole series of uh, things where I agree with you uh, in terms of our, our industry. Patagonia built its entire development based on this, uh, on, on reducing its impact, protecting the environment, and this wasn't hasn't been the case for other companies in the beginning, which often uh, make drastic efforts, but perhaps not enough, but which the one thing today which is very important for us at Eurosima is we there's a huge uh, dis difference between uh, the, the different type of uh, members. We have uh, small craftsmen, we have publishers, we have uh, audiovisual production uh, companies and large groups and so I'm so proud of everything that has been done and to have as one of our members uh, through our U USV and network with Pierre and Notox uh, and all the actions linked to the sea, etc. We talked about 20, the crisis in 2008, which, which made, which inversed the tendency, and was the first major negative uh, trend in the uh, board industry. But there's no longer a single uh, project leader in Yosima without trying to reduce their environmental impact and take into uh, account eco-design. There is no longer a single uh, project which ignores these uh, processes, and I'm, I'm very uh, proud of this. We try to support them and, uh, uh, and showcase their projects. This is from the very outset. Uh, 
if we could go back to the presentation, the beginning of the presentation, I didn't want to monopolize uh, the uh, speech. There's a, a slide which I missed out, and this is actions within different uh, c committees. We have uh, um, a committee with all the uh, human resource uh, managements for projects which are uh, complementary. We have what we call the hardware uh, committee to accompany uh, to support the development uh, with the least impact possible. And we also have a uh, eco design and eco innovation uh, uh, committee whose aim is to re mo uh, reduce the uh, environmental footprint throughout the whole chain. And they are perfectly integrated. We have the uh, Kohai uh, uh, environmental label to reduce the impact of uh, our eco designed products on the environment and to protect. Uh, nature, whether it be the, the the sea or the mountains, we have a reach commission to look at all the toxic products, uh, to make sure that the whether it, uh, uh, we've developed our projects for uh, recycling neoprene, which is supported by uh, Ripcar, developing uh, 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 polybag uh, recycling uh, projects. These are bags in which which protects our products at the suppliers when they arrive at in containers, and very often and th these uh, uh, end up in the bin. So we're working on alternatives with a whole series of partners for distribution and also producers developing. Uh, we have. Uh, major uh, projects for using uh, biosource materials, uh, recycling uh, 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 fishing uh, lines with a uh, workshop in Saint Luce, enable us to manufacture uh, uh, swimming uh, costume parts uh, with recycled uh, materials, uh, with uh, things from the fishing industry here on the Basque Coast for the outdoor uh, techniques. We want to have uh, PFC uh, free um, waterproof uh, waterproofing. And for the new region, we want to include all the products and projects which are eco-designed and biosourced in uh, this uh, call for interest based on uh, sports and leisure activities. And within the framework of, of developing technical products, we are uh, not using glues, um, removing resins. And we can, uh, Nutox is a very good example of this. It, the uh, insulating aspect as well. Patagonia yeah, has done. Uh, a great deal of work on this. There's a, a lot of other activities. We want the technology transfer centers to be able to uh, do things uh, more quickly. And for the supply chain project, I've, I've spoken to the supply chain uh, commission uh, members on the phone a while ago, Yurisima, who said that we're trying to use this of uh, transport as much as possible and the spaces within containers uh, so that um, uh, they don't, uh, they're not uh, transported MD, so as to reduce the environmental impact. The most important thing, and I'd like to finish on this note, you've all, which you've all said, is that citizens who are also consumers should be able to have, uh, should be able to uh, say what they want, what they don't want. We are in an economic system like any other industrial uh, business or service provider. The board sports companies, in terms of offer, uh, propose uh, products uh, according to demand. So before we look at biosourced uh, eco-design materials, 
we need to take these um, into account. And I think that today this is what will enable us to, little by little, to change uh, our con our consumer trends, help the consumers to make the right choice, help the industry in terms of all the actions implemented uh, to influence uh, public policy. Because if we can help uh, uh, consumers to make the uh, choices more easily, then will help to protect the environment. And the idea is this paradigm which has changed in terms of the business model, which had been in place for since the beginning of the 1980s, and which enabled us to have double-figure growth. We now need to move on to another economic model, which will be uh, in response to uh, the demand of consumers for uh, uh, products which have a, a lower impact on the environment. Thank you so much. Lots of uh, interesting food for thought to uh, start the discussion and to start engaging you as well. Uh, if I have to maybe um, um, point at barriers that you have mentioned that are maybe keeping the surfing industry from having a more profound impact on ocean preservation. Uh, preservation. Uh, you've mentioned the mind of the consumers. Uh, so basically the fact that consumers are being bombed to buy things that they don't need, but also that it seems that you're not still massively ready to reward uh, with their purchase those companies that are willing to reduce their profit margins to deliver higher quality, to deliver uh, environmentally and socially more sound products. Um, You've also hinted maybe at a lack of political will or a lack of incentives to help consumers make the right environmental choice. And I think you both, Florian and Christophe, touched on that. Um, I'm not sure what you think, uh, what ideas do you have? We'd love to open the discussion to you now. But I believe before we do that, the Soup Rider Foundation would like to share a video with us. So start sharpening your questions, because after the video, we'll be opening the floor to you so that you can react uh, to all the ideas that are being put on the table. I'd like to introduce the film you're going to see. For those of you who are local, it's called the Ballet, uh, Malandon Ballet, which is a, a, a ballet from Biarritz. It's uh, known internationally. It's a very big uh, ballet. And in this ballet, there was a choreographer who had created a, a performance called uh, Siren, which means swan. And it's about the oceans and plastics, the problems of uh, plastic pollution. Uh, in the oceans, and people in the ballet uh, could see what we were doing in uh, uh, Rofio Planet. And at the last minute, they were able. We were able to organise a performance on uh, the Cote de Basque uh, beach for the Day of the Ocean. So we had an artist called Sam Dugagus, who. Uh, uh, creates drawings on the uh, on the beach. He joined up with the choreographer, who uh, reduced uh, the choreography. And on the morning of the choreography, we at Zephyr, who didn't know anything about dancing or choreographies, the dancers were uh, uh, ready to take part, and with them we were able to on the uh, beach for the World Day of uh, the Ocean. It was a very uh, important event for us because the people who attended the performance uh, uh, actually cried with emotion. It was a very important uh, moment and this is what it, the film is about. <laughs>
Okay, well, that was a beautiful video. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to now open the floor to you. I'm not sure if there's anyone in the audience that would like to react to anything that has been said during the panel or to ask any questions. If you do, raise your hand and we'll bring on the microphone to you. And someone has to break the ice. Perfect, thank you, sir. If you want to say your name. Yeah. And I'm Gilles. I'm the president of the Friday Foundation Europe, and I'm a, I'm a dancer, as you could see. Moi, j'ai entendu des des choses. I've heard some very interesting things uh, about rules. You said that uh, a good behavior is more uh, profitable. I think there's also something which is missing. I think we know to talk about optimism. If we we need to look at the glass half full more than uh, rather than a glass half empty. Without optimism, it's cynicism. And I found very interesting. And when you said about the slogan, uh, if you don't need it, don't buy it. I think half of France, when people want to uh, buy, buy something that Nike doesn't make, I think we shouldn't. Uh, we should be careful not to get the wrong enemy. Um, I think we need to list what's being done well and what isn't. But uh, thank you very much. I think it was very interesting what you all said. I very much share uh, the optimism that we need. Personally, my uh, environmental commitment goes back to the 1970s, uh, when, which is a uh, when we were looking for utopia. And if we're hearing a dystopian uh, discourse today, what I can see is that at the time we were called freaks, but we had leashes which we made ourselves for our surfboards. We bought second-hand clothing. As we refused the system, we refused everything from the system. We were on the margin. And but at some point in time, we had to enter the system to, to work, to have a job. At going, at the, going back then, there was no global warming. The problem was pollution. That was the main uh, uh, problem, which was very shocking. And the world of surf 
was very committed. The, the Surf magazine, which was run by John Siverson in 1970, on the 22nd of April 1970, the UN declared the World Earth's Day. And there was a charter which was produced. And this was in uh, Surf Magazine's editorial, which in, uh, had an environmental, uh, which even back then had an environmental section. And surfers uh, wanted to reject the system, go back to nature, and be ecological. But it wasn't very pragmatic. It was rather a utopian vision of things. But all of this has evolved, and now we, we entered this uh, type of manufacturing. What I was, I, I was given instructions when I, uh, I, I used uh, refundable uh, bottles when uh, and glasses when we I was a child, and then afterwards plastic arrived. And plastic was part of this emancipation of society. It was a material which helped emancipate society in terms of creativity. And then in 40 to 50 years, we've seen it. You, you can see the news. In there are. At the uh, bottom of the abyss, at the bottom of the pacification, the scientists found uh, a whole series of uh, microorganisms that they and studied them in a laboratory. And 75% of these microorganisms, which were collected, were polluted by plastic. So that means in just 50 years, plastic uh, has got uh, 10,000 meters down to the at the bottom of the sea. And in terms of geology, 50 years is nothing, nothing at all. So that's where it makes you realize just how big the environmental impact is. And in terms of uh, the call by scientists, they try to alert us. And they also tell us about the ability of resilience, uh, nature's ability to be resilient, the effect of uh, the CO2, you have an acidification of the oceans, which kills coral, and coral uh, is uh, bleached. And there's, uh, many, there are many uh, types of coral, and they realize that uh, the coral went lower to regenerate itself at a lower temperature. And this was something which was very surprising. And also, the biodiversity which developed is not just one or two species of coral which were able to resist, but a whole, a whole range of uh, coral. By uh, going down uh, in the sea, so nature is able to uh, regenerate itself. And this is a message which should be optimistic. It's very difficult to see in our generation. Uh, it's difficult to imagine uh, the uh, uh, way we consume things to change dramatically. But those who talk about a, a dystopia about the end of the world is, is not right. I have a question before you talked about uh, uh, the uh, manufacturing eco-responsibility, and you said that it's the same as uh, a, a, a garment I bought at uh, Decathlon or another store like this. I think that people want to now pay attention to the environment. I think there's uh, a will to do this. I think that the barrier is, in, is the price. Because often we think that something that is organic is uh, more expensive. To change people's behavior, would it not be a good idea to uh, have a, a lower rate of VAT to encourage people to, uh, to buy ecological? To encourage people to, we have a president who 
who has uh, re who recently discovered uh, uh, the environment, would this not be a way of encouraging people to be eco-responsible by reducing the rate of VAT? We hope people make more responsible choices. Maybe Florian. Yes. This is one measure, just one measure that came to our, our minds. Uh, it could be a law t uh, decided by the government, for example, in Norway. There are certain taxes, so many taxes which are uh, imposed on uh, 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 combustion engine cars that nobody buys them anymore. So they're hybrid or electric vehicles which are exempt from that. And so in 2019, more than 50% of cars sold were this uh, type of new vehicles. So I don't think that the Norwegians became ecological overnight. But for, to get such high sales, uh, I think it's the difference in price which explains this. This is just an example uh, of how a government can uh, use, for example, something like taxation to uh, make people more eco-responsible. I think you're completely right. And to take this matter a bit further, we also need to is what often uh, blocks is the ability to, in order to reduce the price of a new product whether textile, technical, or something else, then you have to do large quantities. You have to mass produce. And so this means you have to uh, take manufacturing to Asia. So either, uh, and that's, it, it doesn't go hand in hand with the environmental uh, reflection. So we need the specificity we need to be able to uh, uh, satisfy demand and the volume which is required and develop workshops in places where we need these products rather than manufacturing them on the other side of the planet and transporting them. And this should be encouraged uh, by, uh, through financial means, uh, the imposition of taxation, VAT, and this is a, a political choice that has to be made and would benefit all the citizens and all the companies who uh, are making an effort. I think that perhaps there's also another factor. I took a lot with my six-year-old boy It's the future generation, so it's very interesting to hear what they've got to say. I looked at uh, uh, this conference with him, and when I said what, he, he said, for example, if uh, cars pollute, then we need to block uh, big boats that pollute as well. But the problem is they that bring uh, products from the side of the world, and he said, well, why don't we just manufacture them locally. And that, so he just said, we need to give up these big boats. So that was his solution. So do we really need what do we really need these these big words? I'll pass the floor over to you. I don't I think we really understand how quickly things are moving. 
His son is in a favorable environment. His father uh, has uh, good sense. But if you look at the, the fact that most the, the uh, majority opinion in favor of the envi environment was started by high school students. So many young people amongst us, we are looking for a compromise with a transition from the old system to the new. But it, things can move very quickly. It's going to be very radical. We only need one or two marking uh, events. But the ecology is going to determine the economy, and the economy will follow suit. And our lifestyle is going to change, but we'll get pleasure in different ways. We are told that we have to buy everything. And to find a, a work, you need to uh, uh, produce more, to sell more, to earn more. But this way of doing things is not sustainable. Nobody knows yet. Even the biggest economists don't know. It's something that's going to be experimental. It's something that's going to happen. But in this, uh, the way society evolves, we need to remain optimistic. And, and this is how the six-year-olds today think. Panel, okay. please, yes. I'm one of the people who are not optimistic like you because I think that it's an emergency and that we are still, we're still in the uh, observation phase. The uh, icebergs are melting, there are catastrophes, the climate's changing, and we, we just keep observing these things we need to stop this and uh, start acting the uh, one thing i really deplore is the uh, government's lack of action they are subject to uh, the influence of lo the lobbies and industrialists and and th this is something we no longer have time to sit back and observe what's happening we need to act before we get to a point of no return, that, so it's an emergency, and that's why I'm not optimistic. Why do we not work more to relocate, to manufacture uh, French uh, brands? Because apart from certain design, most everything is done on the side of the planet, and perhaps if we did this, the consumers I think there are certain things we need to impose on people, otherwise they won't happen. We need to be militant with the beginning of the, the, the combat, and I think it's going to be a very hard and long road. Thank you very much. Your message is clear. The challenges are huge, they are urgent, and we need to, uh, to act now. Uh, we need to also close the panel, but I would like to close with a, uh, with a sentence that Jibu said that I really, really loved. He said, uh, forget the G7 and start with yourself. I think that's great, uh, but I want to challenge you to uh, share with us if you were to, so if tomorrow you're walking through Biarritz, if you have time for that, and you happen to bump into Mr. Trump or Mr. Macron or any other world political leader, what would be your very short, polite uh, message to him? And then we'll close with that round of interventions and move on to the next panel. Christophe. You have to be pol you have to be polite, eh? Act now, act now. Bah, c'est ouais, c'est ça, c'est bougez-vous quoi. Get get a move on. Do, do, uh, you need to act now, quickly. I think we were, if we were able to uh, make uh, to, to match uh, profit with an environmental index, then that might change things. 
I think everything would. I think that money is what is it is, is always the bottom line. There were accountants who tried to uh, add to uh, company uh, um, balance sheets uh, an environmental index. It didn't work, but that's something to do with money. It's complicated, but as in the Hotel du Palais, we could just say, look out at the sea, as they just get them to look at the ocean. In the when there's a when uh, Macron visits, he went to he said to to see what was being done for the G7. Uh, Guillaume was in the meeting and he was next to Mr. Macron and he's a politician and he said hello to everybody and he held his hand and, and he looked at him into the eyes and said and what about the sea and what about the, the sea And people criticized him on the social networks. But I thought it was uh, something, I thought it was great. I think he was very daring. And this was, he was acting in his role as an elected representative. He uh, took advantage of the moment. And he exchanged with Mr. Macron about the ocean. So perhaps this helped his uh, economic, uh, his uh, ecological awakening. I don't know. So look at the ocean and act now. I think that's what we're taking from this panel. Uh, thank you uh, to our guest speakers for your fantastic contributions. And uh, yeah, we'll move on to the next panel on sustainable tourism. de bénévoles, tu sais qu'on avait sollicité ouais. dans toutes les langues ouais. euh, de jeudi on de l'avoir la version jeudi pour vendredi ok est-ce que tu peux faire une relance à ceux qui avaient répondu euh... j'avais fait un, un, un tableau hein, avec les, tous ceux qui sont dispo ouais et mmh. ils, ils avaient confirmé et tout donc... ils avaient confirmé ouais Hop. au moins deux par, par an. Oui, sauf euh, c'est quoi Portugal, c'est pour ça, il y en a qu'un. Ok, il y avait quoi comme langue Donc lui, il faut qu'on ait. Euh, ouais, c'est ça. Euh, anglais, espagnol, portugais. Avec le modérateur ou là ça compte le modérateur ou pas 
modérateur c'est Simon et après euh... non, je suis pas contre Simon mais il n'y a, a, des... a, a pas de tous les noms donc ah, euh, six, six modérateurs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 non 5 plus le modérateur 5 plus le modérateur ouais, 5 plus le modérateur
peut-être pas tarder. Nous allons reprendre les conférences. Je vous invite à prendre place. Ladies and gentlemen, want to bat your seats, please? So just to remind you, you have headphones for the translation, for the English, the Canal 2, and for French, Canal 1. So, si vous pouvez vous approcher euh, silence. I would like to welcome the mayor of Anglet who joined us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for making this venue available to us. And in spite of the visit of the Minister of the Interior, you, you're going to talk to us. I would like to, to, to welcome each one of you, where is, uh, where is the chairman? Mrs. Uh, the, my, my deputy mayor, to tell you how happy I am to welcome you here. Uh, we have four and a half kilometers of beaches. It's a wonderful ocean that we have to preserve and that we must uh, uh, take care of. This is uh, our policy with my colleagues uh, the city, in the city of Anglet. We're working on the quality. We're focusing on the quality of the waters. This is an issue. We have a, we have a, a pebble in our shoe. It's called the, the Adu River. And when we have uh, heavy rains after uh, after a storm, uh, we have problems. So we have to. Uh, to work uh, uh, on the coast, but also upstream. I'm happy to welcome you here at the Espace Océan for your work. You, you couldn't be better when when we can have uh, such a venue here. You 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 are you have to be locked up here. If not, you would be looking at the waves all the time. This is why we have curtains. We have drapes, so you cannot look at the ocean. So I hope you're having a good time in Anglet. I think you're going to be working in the other little town nearby with only pebbles. What, what's the name of that town? Oh, Biarritz. So you'll go, you look at the world of Biarritz, which is very different from us because we have quality of beaches that you're not going to find in Biarritz. So I wish you a very good evening. With you, Simon, so you will introduce all those moderators coming from all over Europe. So let's start to go about tourism in the place of a tourism in Anglet. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. And thank you, uh, speakers, for making your way all the way to uh, Anglet to join us in this uh, uh, ocean pavilion. I would just like to start with a small story to, uh, to make the context of this talk. Uh, imagine that you are uh, in a living in the city. You have you booked your holidays six months in advance, and finally the day has come to go on your trip, to go ten hours by plane, car, or whatever to get to your exotic beach destinations. You arrive, you put your swimming suit on, but then the lifeguard comes to you and says, "No, you cannot enter. It's dangerous. There's dangerous bacteria." This is the topic of today. Uh, uh, related to uh, tourism and how we can make it more sustainable, that the reality of 
having bad water quality in tourism areas uh, uh, can be uh, uh, resolved. Um, we are going to do that according to the uh, uh, Sustainable Development Goal uh, 14, which is to conserve and sustainably, sustainably use oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable uh, development. So in this case, we're talking about sustainable tourism development. So we'd like to introduce to you our, uh, our speakers. Um, first, we have Sarah Hatimi. She is uh, our water quality uh, expert at Surfrider Foundation Europe. Uh, then we have Florence Las Lasser, uh, a French deputy for the 5th fifth district uh, of the Pyrenees and councillor of Anglet. Uh, Antonio Mereles, a Survivor Foundation Europe volunteer and chapter president of Porto, the Porto chapter. Uh, we have En France Didier, a French environment ministry delegate and delegate on the uh, Sustainable Development Goal 14, very relevant. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, Filippos Drouziotis, from <laughs> almost there, uh, from Cyprus, all the way from Cyprus. Uh, he runs the Cyprus Sustainable Tourism Initiative. Uh, so each of you will have a five minute, uh, five to seven minute presentation. Uh, I would uh, like to invite Sarah to uh, give us the context of uh, water quality issues. Okay, je je vais me lancer. So I have about five minutes to tell you about the context and uh, uh, water quality issues and tourism. I will start, like Simon said, with why, why, why uh, tourism is related to the water quality. Uh, today, the coast is the first tourist destination internationally. Therefore, all the water activities and the offer around it are developing year after year. Uh, we see there uh, uh, rental agencies, uh, surf, uh, uh, surf classes, uh, and this is getting more and more important in the tourist offer. The quality, uh, the water quality, is now a, a commercial argument. If you have a good uh, water quality, tourists are going to come and spend money in your town, and uh, uh, the water quality must be excellent. The water quality in Europe is uh, the, the the basic regulation from 1976 was revised in 2006, and it gives a basis of uh, the monitoring of the water quality since uh, 1976. And uh, since the creation of Surfrider in 1990, we work to complement the regulations because, okay, the, the, the positive side is that it does exist, but it has uh, gaps. We, year after year, we're trying to to inform the European Commission uh, to ask them to change, the, to uh, modify, to change the directive. It's, it's, there have been some new things since 1976, but in 2020, next year, there will be a new revision and we want to change things. How? What are the gaps? What is missing and what is in the directive? It requires uh, the supervision, the monitoring of all uh, bathing waters, not not the coast uh, at large or the uh, areas where people are in the water and bathing. It requires the monitoring during the summer season, one season, not year round. I don't know if you practice uh, uh, water activities, but it's often in the summer in when you have a, a good uh, surfing conditions. Uh, so it is uh, limited as a monitoring period. It requires the monitoring of two parameters, two bacteria. I'll let you calculate no chemical pollutant, no waste, uh, no, uh, uh, all this is not uh, monitored under the directive, things that can have an impact on the environment, but also on human health. Finally, 
If you uh, remember what is displayed on the beaches, I don't know if uh, it seems uh, satisfactory, if it's the right information given the right way, always the same way throughout Europe. I'm not sure. That's uh, uh, Sir Friday is working on all these issues to try to change the regulation so that in 2020 we have a, a uniform information uh, so that we know in what water we're going to, to be swimming and so that we become actors of the water quality. What are the gestures to the action to avoid and what we should implement as citizens to implement to improve the water quality. So what are the issues we're working on? These are two questions we would like to answer. The first one is to know how, how the, the practitioners uh, can, can have a good uh, water quality on a daily basis, and how can we involve uh, the citizens in order to adapt our behavior. to introduce to us the SDG uh, 14. I work at the Ministry, ministry of uh, at work at the French Ministry for the Ecological and Solidarity transition energy 14 is something strange. Contrary to what I thought, I'm going to take time to explain. France is very concerned by the ocean. ODD 14 is one of the objectives of sustainable uh, development. We are concerned because we are present uh, over all the ocean, and France manages and is responsible for 11 million um, kilometer, uh, square kilometers of uh, exclusive economic zone worldwide. France is also a member of what we call the Convention of uh, Regional uh, Seas that, that were created by the United Nations to protect the oceans, to protect biodiversity, to reduce marine pollution. There are 18 such conventions, and friends, we are parties to uh, six of them. Uh, at the international level, at the UN level, the authorities feel that the regional uh, seas are ideal to implement systematically the objectives of ODD 14. Very quickly, this is uh, the each uh, um, the, each one of the uh, 17 um, sustainable development objectives. Uh, there is one on they are concern everything, and for each one, there are target values, which are the results of the negotiations of all the countries which are members of UN members. In the target values of ODD 14. The first one, 14.1, is very important, is reduce all pollutions, regardless of their origin. Of course, marine pollutions, the, the ships uh, with the uh, spills, uh, oil spills, and but also any all pollutions uh, resulting from uh, uh, on, onshore activities, plastics, and uh, uh, tourist uh, uh, coast, uh, coastal activities in the Mediterranean, 150 million uh, inhabitants around the coast, and uh, every year it's twice as much, so twice as much effluence, uh, waste, etc. So it's very important. What well, that's one of the objectives. Another one has to do with the fact that we want to wind, to to define protected marine areas to to give back to the ocean uh, uh, an opportunity to to re replenish themselves 
This is to show you something very silly. ODD 14 is in the middle, and around it you have the, the 17 other uh, objectives. This is just to illustrate the fact that we must have a link if you want to reach the non-pollution objectives of ODD 14. You have to work on ODD 6, management of uh, water resources. You have to work in the uh, to reduce uh, pollutions, uh, plastic emissions. You have to work on consumption, uh, ODD-8, uh, sustainable consumption and production. So we recycle, we reuse, we work differently. We use uh, eco-sourced uh, materials. So each objective is, all the, all the objectives are interconnected. If we want to succeed, we have to work with global, uh, with a global vision. Uh, the, uh, this project was uh, funded by ADEM France to, uh, on the uh, six uh, regional uh, seas to see what are the regulations, uh, to see what is the current situation. We realize that we, uh, uh, the world tourism has uh, uh, grown exponentially in the past 20 years we will reach 1.8 billion uh, tourists internationally in 2030. So this is huge. This is something we cannot stop, uh, except that tourism is, uh, is uh, sensitive to safety issues, uh, climate issues, but it's still uh, uh, very strong. Uh, I only have two more slides. So we looked at all the impacts uh, from different uh, tourist activities. As, uh, as you said, there is a major part of coastal activities in some countries, some uh, islands. Uh, it's more than 25% or 50, 75% of the um, GNP. So it's essential in terms of uh, sustainable development. If there is no, no jobs, uh, no activity, the m most vulnerable uh, populations uh, will be in dire straits. However, it has a major impact on the resources, uh, waste, pollution. It has a major impact because the uh, there are twice as many populations. Here we look, uh, there, there, it has a major impact because uh, recently we've seen uh, tourist uh, cruise ships uh, are increasing with uh, a lot of impacts with a mass effect. Uh, finally, something that should s scare you, but we'll try to find solutions, is what do we, how, what to do in terms of governance to, to solve uh, the tourist issue. Here, you can see that a lot of actors are, are concerned. Uh, we saw, uh, uh, earlier we saw the manufacturers, but their hotels, uh, transportation, air, airplanes, and this is very complex to coordinate. Each one, everybody tends to, to work in their own interests without, uh, it's not negative, but sometimes uh, you, don't, uh, you don't look at the global vision. So from, from that, maybe we can work on solutions. We, uh, we received a, a bit of a context on water quality, then the larger framework of how we should uh, improve. Uh, and uh, make uh, more sustainable use of the ocean and our uh, uh, waterways. Uh, I would like to go into a specific case together with uh, Antonio Mareles. Uh, please uh, highlight and go a bit deeper into, uh, okay. into that issue. So, Can I use <laughs> hello everyone. Um, I'm here to share with you my experience uh, with the implementation of the Surfrider Coastal Defender Program in a specific topic that was is water quality. I'm here talking not by myself as the Surf Rider Coastal Defender, but, uh, but, but by the chapter, because, uh, okay. 
because everyone in the chapter in some way contribute to this to this program or to this campaign. So uh, we launched uh, in 2006 the um, 16 the Surf Plus Clean Water. Uh, it was, uh, in some point, um, a reaction to the surf communities. Um, through the um, through the um, social networks, we receive a lot of uh, um, information through surfers um, complaining about water quality. Uh, in some cases, I will try to pass this very fast, but in some cases we have persons telling that, uh, that they were sick after surfing and this occurred in October. October is out of the bathing water season so we don't have a lot of information about the water quality and or at least we don't have access to that information. So with this point and being surf rider we felt the obligation to respond and to create something to give to the surfers what they need that is some kind of uh, protection against the this environmental pro uh, environmental problem. So the problem is related with the specific. This problem is related with a specific beach. is the most urban beach. Uh, is the second most urban beach in Portugal. is in the north. is in Matosinhos. As you can see by the pictures, um, that beach have the two one river uh, and one river stream in the south and the river in the north uh, that contribute to the water quality of that beach and in the plus we have the harbor in the north of the beach so we are talking about the beach that during the um, the all year is is very fr uh, it has a very um, complex utilization because it, there are not just surfers that use the beach that use it all the year but also uh, bathers also, all kind of users in water sports that you could imagine. Kite surfers, stand up pedal, everything. And so, from the river stream, you could see image like this, or a situation like this. Uh, of course, it, it is not a, a normal situation, but exists during all year. So, we, ha we have a problem of, uh, conc a concrete problem of pollution in this kind of beach. Of course, this is not in the same time, but this is the same beach, but during the bathing water season. So, um, unfortunately, I was not able to collect a picture of the surfers, in of all the surfers in the normal day during the weekend, but I assure you that in this beach, in the weekend, we could have more than 300 surfers on the water, because it's a beach that have, that have more than 10 surf schools uh, in all uh, on the same site. So, we are Surf Rider in Porto, so we have to make some kind of activism. So, we create in 2016, 2017, the first uh, crowdfunding campaign in Portugal made by surfers to an environmental problem. So, we try to engage the surf community to contribute to the water test analysis that we are doing still now. Um, and then we continue. Uh, in 2018 and 2019, we continued the program or the crowdfunding, but in that time trying to uh, engage also the surf industry in Portugal. What we have done is invite surf brands and also other kind of brands, but more surf brands to involve and contribute to the campaign and trying to get more awareness between the surf community. Um, so this is this is the picture of the first campaign. Um, we did this first test analysis and we found a very easy um, and almost common sense um, correlation between the heavy rain or the big rainfall events and the bad water quality because the truth is that in the summer or where we have no rain the water is good. So we felt that we need more information so we um, Oh, these pictures are from the w how we share that information with the com with all society. Um, this is the image of the second uh, crowdfunding campaign with the old surf brands that contribute in some way to the, the to the campaign. Um, so, as with experience that that we have 
in the first campaign. We expand the, the, the water tests to more beaches. So in this way, we are trying to take out the focus on one beach in particular and trying to show you that is a general problem, that we believe that is not a Portuguese problem, but is m maybe a modern society problem. Because when we have a lot of persons in one site, uh, as you can see in this image, is an urban area or metropolitan area, we have more pressure in the environment, so we are obliged to have better ways to respond, better ways, and being more, f more acting in the more fast way. Uh, so we will keep our um, campaign during the next year. We will try to improve the the information that we are collecting. And now uh, I would like to share you a video that Sabine has <laughs> edit and I think I think that really could um, give a, a very good idea of what you have been done in the last years. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Antonio, for that uh, amazing effort and a uh, nice video. Um, I would like to ask uh, Florence to uh, uh, assist us uh, how uh, tourism issues and bathing water is managed uh, around the Council of Anglet or in France in particular. Je suis celle qui a compris, mais j'ai pas tout compris de la question. Heureusement que vous me l'aviez envoyé par écrit. Uh, non, je plaisante. Um, If I understood your question, I'm trying to. I've not done a PowerPoint. I wanted to apologize for arriving late and for leaving early because I have to go back to the G7 meeting. I'd like to uh, congratulate Sir Friday for these uh, four days of conferences, for the role that you play you're not simply uh, complaining. You regularly try to bring together different people throughout the year, both in France and abroad, to try to find solutions. And I think that uh, that deserves uh, a round of applause. Earlier you talked about certain figures, there were two which I found which are local figures uh, for our department, the 58% uh, on, the, of the, on the Basque Coast and 6.5% on, 
of uh, employment concerns uh, tourism. So there's several conclusions. Firstly, there's many other. What makes our territory so attractive is its coastline. Secondly, tourism is the source of uh, wealth, and so we must must uh, uh, maintain our heritage. And what starts out on the land ends up in the sea. We must maintain this heritage and not allow it to become to deteriorate. We must turn tourism into a source of wealth. And to do this, I've always defended this idea. And I hope that it will uh, be heard tomorrow. I think we need to uh, invent a new ecosystem in which it will be possible to reconcile uh, a tourist attractiveness and environmental issues. I think, don't think they are uh, two problems which are uh, 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 opposed to each other. I think we need a, a, an increasing quality. I'm sure that you this notion, whatever for in any sector sector of activity, uh, it's valid for any. We need to protect the environment. It's not. Uh, it doesn't mean. Uh, uh, it's not opposed to economic growth, provided that we uh, have a qualitative uh, growth. It's different. But I think there's a lot of uh, things that need to be explored. We need to rethink our uh, environmental policy uh, overall. And to, to think, we need to realize that whatever we do in terms of environment will have an impact on tourism. The quality of bathing water, if it is bad, will uh, mean that, as you said, uh, means that people won't be able to uh, bathe in the sea as much as they want. All these environmental issues which affect tourism and other issues must be dealt with by uh, through the prism of the ecological transition. I'm not going to insist on the uh, quality of bathing water because we've already heard about this. Valerie, you talked about this in your introduction. I to say that the state and must support local authorities who are the uh, protagonists. And when I say support, I don't just mean in terms of uh, jurisdiction. I think everybody understood what I meant. The government, when it was uh, uh, drafting a new law of centralization, it wants to de also decentralize. Uh, we, we cannot make our environment. We cannot just do this in a decentralized manner. We need the local uh, specificities to be taken into account. Like here in the Basque Country, I can think about uh, hydroelectricity. We've worked a lot about on this. There are solutions. We, could, we talk about 100% green electricity, but this is. But we know that that if each territory waits for the neighbour to make an to to, make, to do an effort to make an effort, then uh, things will never get moving. Our responsibility is to give local authorities new tools to find specific solutions which are adapted to the local cases. Another uh, example is uh, what we'll be doing, a new law uh, known as Plajek, which is the draft law against uh, waste, in which there are four main axes to stop waste, mobilize industrialists to transform our means, ways of production, uh, consuming better, and improve uh, waste collection. If we manage to do all this, then of course, there'll be less waste 
that'll end up in the sea and water in general. I could talk about this a lot, lot more if you wanted. Thank you. So we did have some uh, some words from the NGO sector, from uh, uh, government. Uh, what is missing here is the private uh, sector, and uh, we have uh, we have Filippos uh, from Cyprus who represents the uh, sustainable tourism uh, initiative in Cyprus. So hello, we're very me. curious. Uh, tourism is essential, I believe, and uh, we have to make tourism a more sustainable. We, it's not a sustainable, it's a heavy industry, but we have to make it a more sustainable. And our motto is sustainable tourism makes good business sense. I'll tell you a few things that we are doing in Cyprus. I am the chairman of Cyprus Sustainable Tourist Initiative. We are affiliated with an organization in Bristol, which is Travel Foundation, promoting sustainable tourists. Uh, our, our, we, were, we established in 2006, our mission is to contribute to the development of sustainable tourism in Cyprus that conserves the environment, supports the local economy, and promotes the local culture. Our partners, it's our, it's our, our advantage, we are partners with the biggest tour operators in Europe, such as TUI, Thomas Cook, Sunmi Holidays, and we're also partners with the Ministry of Tourism, local NGOs, local producers, hoteliers, universities, and other environmental organizations. In all our projects through the years, we demonstrate the benefits that sustainable tourism has to the environment, the society, and the economy of the island, protect the natural environment, promote local cultural traditions, develop close links between local suppliers and hoteliers and operators, educate and inform local people and tourists about sustainability issues, support tourist businesses in dealing with issues such as plastic pollution, water scarcity, and environmental impacts, minimize the waste pollution and plastic pollution. Rethink, reduce, reuse, and recycle are the four essential principles that are followed in all our projects. These are some of our projects. We also part of the BMED projects, pre prevent plastic from the Mediterranean. And we did also other projects about waste, uh, waste mapping, uh, minimize sustainable standards, greening Cypress beaches, and so forth. We also do some beach cleaning ups. And one time, one person told me why we clean up today since the Cypriots will litter tomorrow. And then we make them awareness campaigns and educate. We try to educate the people to change their habits, change their behaviors. We are part of the BMED project. And we're very proud. Some of the projects are related to plastic and pollution is the Greeny Cypress beaches where we encourage, these are the 10 categories. We encourage the people that to don't use uh, cars to go to the beach, to use uh, bicycles or walk. We encourage uh, local vegetation. We encourage no plastic on the beaches and so forth. Uh, we also did a, a Thomas Cook plastic reduction project. We were very proud about it. We tried to reduce plastics in the hotels and to reduce the use of plastic bag by Thomas Cook clients in the self-catering facilities. Some of the results, we managed to save 49,000 plastic cups were saved in one of the hotels and almost 70,000 in another hotel. They have savings in money. And we save almost 800,000 plastic bottles. I give you the, the issue here. Every time an all-inclusive client was asking for water, the hotel was giving them a plastic bottle. We convinced the hotel to give them filter water and not in plastic cups, but in a, a reusable cups like these ones. So this had a benefit to the hotel. The clients were very happy and were supported also by Thomas Cook. This is very good. And we managed to save 1,100 bottles per day in one hotel in one season. And we made the thinker uh, with 1,100 plastic bottles, which we put in the world travel market, demonstrating the impact that this, uh, this project had to the, to the tourist industry. And with the plastic, some of the plastic ends up in the, in the sea. We have 1,000 plastic products end up in the sea. And, and now some of the things that you know, there is so much plastic, especially in the Mediterranean and in Cyprus. We are the worst, one of the worst countries doing something about the plastic waste in Cyprus, unfortunately. And uh, we hope that we, our projects will contribute to reduction of plastic pollution. And, uh, and <coughs> we encourage the people to reduce the use of plastic in their hotels. Going back before, I'll tell you one other example where we save plastic bags. We encourage the hotels not to use plastic bag in the bin in the room. We encourage the hotels to use plastic bag only in the bathroom. And we tell the clients anywhere wet garbage to put it in the, in the bin 
in the bathroom. That's say reduces by half the plastic bags used in the in the in the hotel rooms. Uh, that is acceptable by the industry. It's acceptable by the customers. It's acceptable by the tour operators, which is had very positive results. Uh, this is some of the things that we did on the on the BMED plastic. We wanted to support the overall aim of BMED to address the challenge of a Mediterranean plastic free, disseminate best practices in regards to plastic waste management. We wanted to implement actions in order to change the social behavior and behavior of the tourist industry regarding the a sustainable use of plastics, inform, train, and actively involved in the hotel industry in the prevention of plastic pollution in the Mediterranean Sea. We did workshops, we trained the hotel employees, we trained the tourists as well to use less plastic. And uh, uh, because I'm in the business, in the all-inclusive hotel, if they use plastic cups, they use about 15 plastic cups per day. That's um, the great amount of plastic cups used in the hotel industry. So hopefully this will change. We organize campaigns to raise awareness regarding plastic pollution. We inform the local authorities and the tourist stakeholders regarding regulations and ways to be implemented effectively in order to safeguard the beaches from litter. And we organize also workshops to inform the hotel industry regarding sustainable practices. Uh, I'm not gonna go th through all this, but what I would like to tell you is we use a lot of plastic in the hotel industry from packaging, like in the, in the, in the room, in the bathroom, you use the shampoo and the soap we try to use dispensers. So this is uh, encouraged in the hotel industry. And we try to also do not use any plastic or plastic bottle in the hotels. Uh, beach users, well, the main beneficiaries of the project we did was the beach users, because we have a lot of litter in our beaches. The, and the general public, we increase their satisfaction and they, will, and they will be informed about the importance of stop littering and see the sea from plastics and also the marine biodiversity, which indirectly impacted by the projects uh, results. Uh, okay, we did cleanups, we did sustainable education to schools and to children, we distributed information and leaflets to local communities and hotels about the importance of preventing the use of plastic and how to, how to keep clean the beach and plastics. We also did workshops to the hotel employees and we reduced the plastic bags in self catering accommodation. We use a cloth bag in the self catering accommodations. Uh, local Local people, uh, they, they understood the, uh, they were aware of the importance of stop polluting the sea with the plastic. The, hotels, the hoteliers see the benefits from not using plastic and also in their pockets, they, they save money. And we also introduced the cloth bags, which suggested in all the, in, in the self-catering apartments we're using cloth bags. Every client that comes for 10 days in Cyprus uses more than 30 plastic bags during their stay. So we gave them a cloth bag and we encouraged them to do so. Uh, this will be available. There is one. Can we play that video? Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. I think uh, we all uh, like ta that. Uh, we need. We think we need to take action uh, right now. So I would like to ask you uh, one question to all of you, uh, which is what would be your priority? What would be the first change you want to make to uh, uh, make uh, uh, the tourism sector compatible with the use, sustainable use of the oceans and the waterways? <laughs> How can we choose one action to promote to s to solve the problem, I cannot. I'll choose two. And I will stick with the quality of the bathing waters. The first thing is to, to, to know the pollutions, to act at the source, because to, to close down, to, to prevent access to the, to the beaches is not a solution. But we have to to treat the problem, to treat the pollution. To, we have to know where it comes from, how it ends up in the beaches, and eliminate it uh, uh, forever. This is what Antonio is doing, uh, is trying to do in Porto. The f second thing, which is important uh, that we have to implement very shortly, we're working on that for the revision of the directive. It's information. We should have a uniform information to have a information 
uh, panel with a row of results. Uh, uh, no, we need to have uh, real information. What is it, what we looked for in the water, what it involves, what are the impacts on our health, the impacts on the environment, where the pollution is coming from, how, how should it be addressed. And next to that information, uh, an involvement, everyone's involvement, to know what to do to limit the pollution. All the pollutions are man-made and they're reinforced by tourism on the coast. So the solution comes from us and from our behaviors. For, for me, the, the two main things are to know the pollution, to get rid of them, and to act, to get involved, and to find the way, a way uh, to stop polluting. So if we can have two answers, uh, the first one is, I believe, in education. I often uh, visit uh, school children. There are many other simple gestures they could learn at an early age that they would bring home. Many things that we don't. Education is not only school, it's also associations, uh, sports uh, activities, education. I would like to focus on, on the cigarette butts. There was a recent study from the European Commission. It's the plastic waste, which is the most important after plastic bottles on the beaches. So in the plastic butts, you have uh, plastics. And it takes uh, up to 10 years for a cigarette butt to, to be uh, degraded. Uh, we work in Anglet to collect them with uh, with the little cups, uh, but we need to go further. I was talking about the circular economy. Now we're going to implement a new project for cigarettes and cigarette butts. And as of 2022, the um, tobacco manufacturers, the filter manufacturers, will have to contribute to the management of the uh, end of the life of the cigarettes. So we hope that we will be able to have a, a cigarette butt collectors everywhere. In Brittany, one company is already uh, processing uh, this uh, uh, butt, but uh, through education, uh, we should uh, uh, get used to, um, to put it, putting them at the right, right place. Be the um, how the surf uh, tourism industry works. So maybe it will start if we want to change uh, the mind of the people. We have to start giving the um, the example, right? So maybe the form of they build the hotels or the form that they manage the um, consumption of the resources will be a start a starting point, um, and after that or. During that the, during that um, phase, uh, the engagement of people, because not only the customers of the hotel of the business, but also the awareness or the the engagement of the surroundings, the local people uh, where they are established, because the companies should think that or should remember always that they belong to a place. They are working in a place in a community. And they have to be part of that community. So it's important, it is fundamental to uh, look to the, his customers, but also for to the to the community that's surrounding uh, surround them and change, trying to change also that that behaviors. En fait, moi, je suis d'accord avec toutes les propositions. I agree with all these proposals, and you have to connect the water management policies and and the coastal communities in order to reduce pollution beach pollution for training uh, education awareness recycling all this could be a uh, concentrated at the local level in action plans. They are very, some countries do it. In Montenegro, it's a 
with a big uh, tourist industry. They have an action, uh, sustainable tourism uh, action plan, and they, we should develop uh, strategies on the sustainable uh, tourism. This, this, uh, this is a tool where a local community, at its own scale, with their own heritage, their weather, their biogeography, its culture, brings together all the people that are concerned by the ocean and tourism. And they can together they can define um, they can define concrete proposals so that uh, in everybody's interest and so that you uh, together it's so in in a win 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 situation how to manage the oceans. In fact, we all use a common uh, good, but we. Uh, this is a, an issue. We have to collectively manage this common property with uh, local concrete actions. And then the issue, uh, the question of, uh, of the cost uh, to repair, uh, how do we do to avoid damages or to collectively repair the damage? Stakeholders, in order to achieve the, the, the pollution, the environmental pollution that as a result of tourists. We, we as an organization work very closely with TUI and Thomas Cook, and TUI moves around 40 million people around the world. And then what they are trying to do is to, to do as sustainable as possible. So we do some projects with them, and we have the leverage because they convince the hotels to participate in these projects. And this is very important, and we are very pleased that for these coming years, we'll have one project with, with the Prince Alper Foundation with regard with the sports, water sports. We don't do so much surfing in Cyprus, I'm sorry. We do other water sports and mini cruises, so we try to address these issues, and we also try to address the, we want uh, sand and sea plastic free. So we want to get rid of all the plastic, and this will look up with the contribution of the tour operators. One good thing as well, I have to say, is that about tourists, the Europeans, the Northern Europeans, if you like, especially the Scandinavians, when they come to the Cyprus, they are more environmentally friendly. So they help us also change our habits. They they're putting a lot of pressure on us. And this is, this is very good. What also I'm concerned about, what happened to countries that they do not belong to the EU? Because Mediterranean has other countries as well that they would not follow the rules and regulations of the European Union, like they, they would prevent the single-use plastic by 2021. What happened? Because if we, even if we try our best in Cyprus, if our neighbors, Egypt, Turkey, Lebanon, and also other countries, Tunisia, they don't follow the rules, then we still have a problem. So there has to be something more on a global uh, UN issue to address rather than a European issue. Thank you, Thank you very much. I think um, these are some wonderful comments that we can add into our ocean call that we will deliver uh, at the end of the week. Uh, I would like to open the floor to, uh, to our audience to ask questions to uh, our speakers. So if you have a burning question, please uh, raise your hand right in the back. There's a one and one here in the front. Roman Quesada. I'm a member of the board of directors of uh, Safra Definition Europe, and I work as a landscape gardener for local authorities. There's something which I find interesting. We've t been talking about sustainable tourism and also about what the environment enables us to develop. And for the coastline, there is something which uh, which is very closely linked to the effects of s sediments and hydrology means that there was that there's always somewhere upstream or downstream which will have an impact. We're in a very specific r r region, the Miaka, in Akiten, which refers to the integrated management of coastal waters. One of the difficulties 
is uh, speaking uh, between municipalities or speaking on a regional level. The, uh, 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 those involved in tourism have found this even more difficult because in our jobs, the local representatives want to see how they compare to other towns. So I'm not sure if I can be objective in that respect, but we need to re-formulate uh, the question about uh, about how to no longer see ourselves as competitors against each other, but to work together in a more connected way and to make the ecosystem a, a, a true a system of uh, comparison in terms of synergies. We, we we need to manage the environment together. Thank you. Uh, how, what can we do to create more synergies? How can we better work together? I, I completely agree with the gentleman and what he said. But, uh, and there are tools available to, for managed, for integrated management, which can be uh, used under the auspices, for example, of the United Nations program. This can be used with this can be used in sustainable, this is for the method. But many other projects are managed uh, in an integrated uh, manner. For example, Agenda 21 uh, works very well. And this creates a great deal of collective intelligence and uh, has positive economic uh, consequences. It gives a certain, uh, f it, it actually gives power to the uh, local authority. I, I share your uh, opinion. There are a lot of tools, they're not always very easy. But my English is not uh, fabulous, so I'm not sure whether I fully understood. But perhaps you said this. What we need to avoid is uh, two-speed tourism. I think it's not because one town or city or region has understood that the neighbor has understood, but, or perhaps the neighbor hasn't got the means available uh, to, to act. So this is a very complex issue. Everybody I think shares uh, the, the, con the concern for the environment, but uh, it's not easy to work together. It's not possible to have green tourism and for our neighbors to not look at the subject at all. It's too complex and it's what we need to avoid on a planetary scale. If you have tourists, not on the numbers, Cyprus has about 4 million people, and we like to focus on the, on the quality and not the numbers. And uh, another thing about the sharing, disseminate, disseminate information and projects, when we did projects in Cyprus through the Travel Foundation of UK, we disseminated to other destinations in the Mediterranean. So we did a project a few years ago about saving energy, water and energy with simple tips. We gave this information to other destinations such as Morocco and uh, Tunisia, so it is very important that uh, and also your organization can do that to disseminate information to other destinations and uh, that will help. But engaging all the stakeholders, it became easy for us in Cyprus because we have the support of the tour operators. When the tour operators bring to the island two million people, when they say to the hotelers to participate in, or the municipalities to participate in an initiative, they do participate. So we have them on our side. Whereas if somebody else tells them, it's not so easy to get the the people to participate. Thank you. Uh, next question, uh, in the back. Oui, bonsoir. Uh, moi pas it's not so much a question as a reaction. You talked about uh, actions to be carried out. Perhaps this is more for 
uh, Mrs. Lasser, there are very often political subjects which are subject to votes and decisions, and we can see a certain frustration uh, by citizens uh, who hear uh, this political uh, speeches. There were uh, scandalous uh, commercial treaties which go against everything that's being said. So I'd like to go back over that and say that we also are expecting a lot from politicians and we haven't seen any um, answers as yet. Just one comment about the ocean. It's a little bit more complicated and it's very sector based. We can see one of the subjects that you propose is the transition, the ecological transition of maritime uh, sectors, tra maritime transport. 80% of uh, uh, merchandise is carried by boats today. And so this is a major challenge internationally, more than nationally, for each ship owner as well. We need to make this evolve in terms of waste, in terms of fuel, in terms of uh, the way they're hosted in different uh, ports. We need an approach which is not so much uh, one of based on competition, but more based on uh, a common interest. And this is very, very complex indeed. It's not to take away the responsibility of states. It's just to say that every level is responsible. All the users and the industrialists are involved. And so what we try to do is to pro propose uh, maritime transport as a, a charter of good practices. Some French ship owners said yes and have tried to deploy it internationally, but this means involves years and years of work because the interactions, the interests of everybody involved are always present and it makes it very difficult to bring them to together to, to bring them together. So I think that everybody does what they can, but uh, it's a very long work and you, we almost n we need to be able to criticize, but we also need to understand where we can act on all different levels, uh, from the local to the international level, and that's what we try to do. Since you asked the question, be just a note of caution. Summarizing a treaty which after 14 years was voted was voted by other European majorities and we now have to vote it even though it's already applied be careful the two th over 2,000 pages so we have to all be collectively responsible and it, it's up to us to uh, to respect our commitments and to be careful that uh, when I think of Mercosur, we can't spend 20 years negotiating something which future generations will or will not vote. Lady in the back. Bonjour, uh, merci pour, uh, Thank you. Uh, good evening. Thank you. My name is Patricia Kaikart. I'd like to highlight something which we all are all aware of. We've You, if it, perhaps the three uh, fundamental living sciences are uh, physics, science, and chemi uh, chemistry and biology. 
the potential of living organisms, how, what impact, uh, the impact on it. When, for example, uh, we talk about uh, a clean ocean uh, because of pollution, but this notion of we need to maintain the balance of biodiversity of the uh, climate of the ocean and if this virtuous triangle that uh, is respected then we we will uh, find a solution every object created every service provided startup if there's a uh, uh, a blue label saying marine friend, uh, marine life friendly, then that would improve things. Though if we uh, take care of the oceans, then this would uh, s solve all the problems. We really need to, to highlight this point because it's a shared value we all have. Okay, so yeah. The truth is that the soft rider are all a joy. Because after all, if si you look at the objectives of the organization, I try to present the three values of the soft rider. Try to change the mentality of the people. de faire rapprocher les gens de ce genre de sujet, changer leur comportement, leurs habitudes, leur manière de consommer les ressources, parce qu'à à, à long terme, tout contribue à la qualité de l'environnement. Donc, nous nous efforçons toujours d'essayer de trouver des coupables dans notre vie, un monde complexe. Mais en fin de compte, nous sommes tous coupables en ce qui concerne l'impact sur l'environnement en tant que société. Parce que nous, nous consommons tous de l'énergie. À mon avis, la majorité d'entre nous est présent aujourd'hui utiliser une voiture. Donc, il faut regarder notre impact en, environnemental, notre empreinte CO2, tout ce que nous avons fait. Donc, nous devons essayer euh, d'agir de manière plus responsable et ensuite, c'est comme ça qu'il faut agir, non pas essayer de trouver des coupables à pointer du doigt. Nous sommes tous responsables. Um, we, I heard we are reviewing the bathing water directive and uh, we submitted five proposals. Uh, could you maybe highlight uh, one of those five proposals uh, that you find uh, important to share? And that will be the last uh, concluding uh, remark to end this session. Okay. I want to choose just one this time. I think this goes back to what we've been saying talking about making people aware uh, and information. I think Antonio has concluded very well. We're all responsible for this living ocean. And it's important for us to all become aware. We need to realize that tourism depends on us. And it's uh, what tourist operators offer or provide depends on demand. And this affects uh, maritime transport as well. So it begins, uh, you begin by voting with your feet. When you go somewhere you don't know, and you go surfing or diving, then choose a, a, we choose a place where there's a magnificent biodiversity. It's good, but we need to respect this ocean and make sure that we don't impact it uh, through our, our own practices, and that's even more important. So that's what I'd like to finish by saying. Then this thing we'll defend next year, making people aware, encourage them to get involved in improving water quality in general, and to understand how we can affect um, the quality of water.
Is there one more last burning question in the audience? Online? No. Okay, then I would like to uh, close this uh, session. Thank you uh, to all the speakers that participated. Thank you for the audience to be uh, uh, active. Thank you very much. Merci à vous. Nous allons donc passer à la phase de conclusion de cette première journée du pavillon océan. Et nous allons avoir cette conclusion grâce à euh, deux personnes que j'ai pu mentionner tout à l'heure qui sont présents avec nous depuis le début euh, de ce pavillon océan. Donc j'invite euh, tout d'abord Sandrine Derville, vice-présidente de la région Nouvelle-Aquitaine, à me rejoindre euh, sur scène et à donc partager un petit peu ses conclusions de cette première journée du pavillon océan. Et après, Guillaume Choisy de l'Agence de l'eau à Dourgaronne sera également directeur général, sera également euh, là pour partager lui aussi ses propres conclusions sur cette première journée. Merci à vous. Merci, euh, merci Florent. Mais tout d'abord, je voudrais euh, remercier et féliciter Surfrider et l'ensemble de ses, de ses partenaires à, pour l'organisation de ce, de ce pavillon océan en, en marge. The organization of, uh, of this session in preparation of the G7. It's important to uh, involve the, uh, the civil society at large, associations, but also uh, guest uh, representatives of uh, local co communities or elected officials. I think this is a, a major initiative and the ocean call, the result of this work that will be published uh, uh, at the end of Friday. Uh, the themes uh, you focus on today, I think they are extremely interesting, especially here in Anglet and in the context of Pro Anglet, the surf competition uh, going on now. We are working on two topics, uh, ocean and tourism. We use the ocean but have an impact on the ocean, tourism, but sports also. Uh, someone talked about uh, sports events. We have one going on now. I know that uh, the World Surf League is a, is a, made a commitment to limit their carbon uh, footprint. Uh, maybe we can. We could hope that we could hope that things could go faster. We should accelerate this transition, but we are uh, a few years uh, from the 2024 Olympic Games in France. There will be uh, some uh, activities in uh, in our region. Uh, there's so, some surf competition will be going on in our region, uh, uh, but I hope that if they take place in our region, uh, I hope we c they can be exemplary uh, from the environmental transition standpoint. We have five years to, to succeed, so this is a reachable objective. So you asked me to conclude the day by uh, to tell you about the commitments of our region on energy, the energy transition with a focus on sustainable uh, tourism. Indeed, our president, Mr. Rousset, has been uh, focusing uh, on energy transition. This is a focus of our action. Our region, uh, our large region, was uh, impacted by climate change. The temperature at the 20th century increased by 1.4 degrees. It's 1.4 can seem a little, but the consequences and the impact on biodiversity uh, is huge. In a few years, we have uh, we suffered extreme uh, uh, weather events. 
And since 2010, we defined a transition strategy, but we think it's important to accelerate. So we adopted this roadmap in last July, which we called NeoTerra. It should uh, enable, us, enable us to uh, accelerate the energy transition by 2030 in conformance with uh, uh, all the regulations, all the, uh, uh, the interests of uh, every stakeholders. We want to bring together all the actors. This is why we think we have to work with Surfrider. We have to work with them and with public and private actors, uh, civil society, uh, with citizens to bring together all the actors around this issue. We started with a scientific project around two issues, the climate issue. Several researchers were involved on uh, climate issues, and they issued a document at, uh, that you've heard of, of Climatera, and they also worked on biodiversity to propose uh, to, to uh, explain the situation of biodiversity in Aquitaine. We built our strategy for the years to come based on concrete objectives. Uh, for some objectives we can act on, others uh, will involve our partners, but they will guide our action. And they will guide the action of the region and in all our interventions and actions they will be they will be part of all our future actions some projects may not be uh, supported if they don't comply comply with these objectives Uh, we were talking about the cost of manufacturing uh, uh, surf clothes of surf boards. What can the what can the uh, public authorities do? Uh, this can be part of uh, of our actions as to support eco responsible projects. We have eleven ambitions. We don't want to have too many. We want to have uh, uh, 11 uh, ambitions for the next 12 years around agroecology. We talk about the ocean today, but everything is interconnected, and all the pollutions we generate are end up in the ocean. We want to get rid of the pesticides by 2030 in the new Aquitaine region. And we want to stop the use of uh, uh, mutagenic and uh, carcinogenic substances by 2025, because they are responsible for several many diseases and responsible for the ocean pollution. We will support changes in the in manufacturing companies. This is also related to tourism. It has a major impact on our environment because of transportation. Most tourists, we have 28 million tourists in our region. They come by plane, most of them. When they come, they get around by car. So our objective is in, in as much as possible that they, they arrive with cleaner uh, modes of transportation, the train, for instance, and, um, and locally too. So us, the region, but uh, the department and the local communities, the, the, the towns, 
and the European Union, we should all together we should develop um, cleaner uh, transportation modes, uh, bicycles, electrical, electric cars. We also have commitments for a resilient city planning with less impact. One figure that was given to us uh, by the researchers is that in uh, our region, erosion, and we estimate that the coastline is uh, receding uh, up to 2.5 meters by year on the sand coast, not in Anglet, but uh, further north in the Land and Gironde. So about two, uh, it's receding by two meters per year. And here in the in the Basque uh, coast, can be up to 25, me uh, 25 centimeters per year. And when there are storms, it can go back by 25 meters. You saw the image of this uh, building in Sulac. This building, which is, which uh, by 2050 will uh, lose 50 meters on the on the sand coast and 25 meters on the rocky uh, coast. About tw uh, 2,000 uh, uh, football stadiums. On this trip, we will uh, lose by 2050. We have uh, 600 uh, uh, businesses and uh, uh, several thousand uh, housing units. So we have to uh, take actions to prevent that. And one option is to to have a different city planning. Someone was talking earlier about the studies you do for city planning. This is one of the topics we have to address. Also, waste processing during a sports event or cultural events or uh, an income of or, or tourists, we have increased the waste. So our objective by 2030 is to have zero waste in our region and to limit the production of waste, preservation of biodiversity, and, uh, and the protection of agricultural lands and forests. As to tourism, since the beginning, uh, uh, we want to be the first destination of sustainable development. We receive, uh, we host many tourists. We we see many figures. Today, uh, there was a. Uh, there is an uh, an over tourism with the uh, packed beaches, and uh, I think now we are reaching the limits. In our region, our objective, of course, if we want to have as many tourists or more, we're not going to say no, because tourism is a necessary economy for our territory. It's a second economy in the region after agriculture but before the aeronautical industry. It's uh, uh, about 100,000 uh, um, direct um, jobs. Here, you are aware of the importance of this uh, business. But we must develop tourism, but by being more respectful of the environment. This is a necessary condition to have uh, the tourism accepted by the local populations. We don't want to see over tourism and local populations no longer accept tourism because it has it destroys their uh, the local fabric and the natural spaces. We do not want that because the strength of our tourism is its diversity, what attracts the tourists in our beaches is the fact that they are preserved, they are nat natural. I talk with tourists and I ask them why they come here. They say, because this is not the Riviera. Here you don't have cruise ships. 
because here we have we don't have concrete on the beaches. We are, we need to protect that. This is why our region is uh, committing to uh, promote sustainable uh, tourism. We're going to support the professionals uh, work with the hotels, the restaurants. Uh, I talked about cruises. The cruises are not developing in our region, but it's beginning. So to to address that, we're going to uh, to uh, conduct surveys to see to measure the real impact of the cruises on our coast, and maybe we're going to take uh, measures so that the community will the community will support only what they uh, feel is environment environmentally sustainable so we will have to make difficult choices but we're ready to do it so quickly these are the the few actions i could mention and we will still support uh, protection actions to, to protect the coastline. In some areas, we need to relocate uh, activities. It's uh, we are really uh, talking about actions which which can be uh, effective only if we work all together, public, private. Uh, uh, etc. We have to all work together in the same uh, direction. These are the commitments of the new Aquitaine region by uh, for the next uh, uh, 10 years. Thank you, Sir Frieder, for organizing uh, uh, this, um, this meeting. Finally, for three, uh, for three hours, we can stay and talk about this uh, uh, energy transition and ocean protection issues. You said that we had to be optimistic. This is a, a positive sign to see that as many people can be mobilized for so long and for four days to talk about, to, to reflect about these issues. Thank you. Je me suis bien sûr au remerciement euh, pour l'organisation de, de ce Friday, de, ce, de cet événement, en particulier euh, Florent Marcou, le, le directeur, Paul Meya, l'ambassadeur, et puis Antonia Citores. Je voudrais remercier le vice-président de la région et le maire, le représentant du maire d'Anglet. Dans notre agence de l'eau, nous avons eu un partenariat de longtemps avec le Sir Friday. With whom we launched the uh, coastline uh, project to preserve the coastline and the quality of water. That was quite a long time ago. We've done a lot since then. What is a water agency? Water agency is a public state-run aid uh, organization. We ha have our own uh, taxes uh, which are collected, and we are redistribute this money uh, for investment projects. Sometimes uh, for uh, associations like Sephrida on uh, mobilizations, and but overall we work on investing uh, in uh, good uh, water quality and the European uh, Water Directive. That's what uh, we do with a very specific form of governance, because we have the uh, former. This is mostly run by local authorities and people for who water is not, is not, this is, we try to come to our work by consensus uh, with uh, agreed uh, uh, strategies and we l uh, allow the local players We have also evolved uh, over the last 50 years, and since the law on biodiversity of 2016, we have jurisdiction over the coastline and coastline water. 
and uh, the biodiversity. So beyond financing actions uh, concerning water, we have jurisdiction with this jurisdiction, which is rather new for us. The Water uh, Adora Garon Water Agency Water Water Board is very specific because since this law, this uh, first committee, which has evolved, and which, on which uh, um, uh, so takes part, which is the Inter Water Committee, which works on uh, the convergence of limiting the impact of uh, pollution on uh, on water and especially seawater, and this commission. Also works like uh, uh, other uh, uh, agencies. We have uh, local uh, plans. This is the context for uh, the Adour Garon uh, Water Board. Today, in the area, we have the effects. We're perhaps one of the most heavily affected uh, areas by. Um, uh, climate change and also the use of uh, water due to climate change and today we have a deficit of 250 uh, million uh, cu uh, cubic meters and 1.2 billion it covers 26 uh, 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 departments every year we use 2.4 billion uh, cubic liters of water and out of this, we will have uh, uh, by 2050, uh, we'll be def have a deficit of 50 percent. This means we'll have to reduce. This means that this is due to a reduction of snow in the Pyrenees, a reduction of 60 percent total disappearance of uh, gla glaciers, as is happening in the Alps. This explains. We often wonder why it's more difficult here than in the Mediterranean. And this is because in the Mediterranean, they have a, a large a storage area through historic canals, which go back to the Roman times, to feed the entire uh, Mediterranean area. We don't have that on the Atlantic. We don't have very large uh, mountain storage areas and no major storage uh, transport uh, system. So it's more vulnerable. And uh, secondly, the glaciers are... Uh, uh, which are, are melting very quickly and we have no more cold water in the winter and the temperature of the Garonne we can see we had to reduce water at usage when water comes in at 30 degrees it doesn't go down in temperature so we are very very vulnerable to uh, climate change the second repercussion is uh, the flow is going to reduce by 50%, 35 for the Adore, 40, and uh, this will have a huge impact. And this will concentrate pollution. Uh, and so this will have, an, uh, uh, yes, another uh, impact, more impact on the um, on the other uh, coast. And these are the effects of uh, climate change. We have a very attractive territory for tourism, and also very attractive for developments. We can see the, the high-speed train arriving in Bordeaux. Uh, economic developments of Toulouse. This is all about an extra 1.5 million inhabitants which we'll have to be able to absorb in terms of air activity and repercussions on the environment and in terms of the concentration of pollution. I don't want to be, we don't want to be pessimistic and the, I heard before, heard about the, the difficulties in, uh, we'll have in 2021 to, mm, I had uh, one month before, we weren't sure that the ocean was sure of a uh, COP21 uh, conference. It was decided just three weeks before it was opened, and we were very lucky at this. It, it was included. And you were uh, responsible for this. I think without suspicions like Surf Rider, this wouldn't have been possible. You were one of the first to alert the uh, state.
It's very good or very good for us to collect data about water. Uh, we've only have two years experience in this field, so hung to the fine sites. But we also need uh, you uh, uh, to see, like we we need uh, fishers, we need uh, climbers. And uh, you, you know this better than anyone. And we need to cooperate on, on these subjects. And this, mean, and this means that we can evolve. And so in the COP21 uh, conference, this was included, uh, the law for biodiversity and ecological transition, which, means, which is why uh, today I'm here able to speak to you because we have this jurisdiction thanks to these and are able to uh, uh, implement action plans. And we also worked 75% 70, of the impact of uh, quality of seawater comes from human activity, not from the sea. And it needs to match uh, 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 human activity, what nature is able to absorb. We had two uh, regional presidents, Alain Rousse and uh, President Salvi, and we, for the Adour Garon area, we were able to work together. Alain Rousse is very attached to the uh, to reducing the impact of pesticides, and this is perhaps one of the most important factors. One of the most uh, uh, difficult for us. We already dedicate 27 million euros per year. We can easily reduce by 25% uh, uh, the, the use of pesticides without affecting the economy. And so it's important. We need to do this very quickly. Whether I think we all share the same expectations. We need to uh, uh, make an effort very quickly or 20, by 20%. And then beyond this, we need to change people's behavior and uh, use uh, nature-based uh, natural uh, solutions using organic uh, matter, things that enable us to store water. We need to preserve humid areas. And we work very close with the region in this in Chad Martin. We have uh, restored uh, uh, um, um, a marsh, marsh area. And this is because we're able to store uh, uh, water naturally. And when it was uh, uh, when it flowed into the ocean, it was much cleaner. These are natural solutions that we need to work on a lot. We need to reappropriate uh, these stakes. And for the medic area, we worked with several departments, uh, the land, Gironde and the regional authorities. And we need to um, materialize these stakes uh, in terms of tourism, in terms of water quality, in terms of uh, preserving uh, biodiversity, these are all uh, uh, stakes on which we work. We also need to we need to have knowledge to to act. Two examples in 50 years, we have don't have any more difficulty with. We have high performance uh, waste uh, processing uh, plants waste treatment plants. Of course, we need to adapt to uh, uh, an increasing population. And 20, 30 years ago, the industry was very polluting. Today, this is not the, the case. Thanks to in investments uh, by agencies and by uh, local economic uh, players. We, we know where this pollution was, and we know how to solve this. But there's more widespread pollution, such as uh, uh, pesticides. Uh, there's an impact on the land, on the soil. And this so the environment has its virtues, and we need uh, a time to solve these problems. And there are also new uh, problems, uh, micro pollutants. We carried out a study with Bordeaux and Toulouse and Arcachon which has just been uh, delivered. 
and today there are solutions available when we look where they come from, pesticides linked to uh, pesticides and insecticide. When you leave Bordeaux, it's multiplied by three. Uh, and this is because uh, waste water treatment plants uh, cannot uh, cope uh, with this. So we need to find solutions. The same for uh, Lumpa. It's one of the, it comes from glyphosate. There's no, it's a molecule which moves in water. It's called Lanta, which is, has a huge impact. And the presence of the region was at the uh, research center in saint showing that out of a, a thousand uh, small uh, toads, when we uh, inject four times the, uh, uh, the amount, there's a, a huge impact. Above uh, glyphosate and 30% uh, mortality, uh, extra mortality rate. So when we uh, leave the cities, it doubles because in washing powders, there's a lot of. Uh, 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 it's not just uh, farming; it's also the way we li uh, live our civilization, which um, which impacts. Of course, we're very lucky to have so many services, so many possibilities, but these do have an impact on the environment. We need to reduce their impact and find out where the, uh, this pollution comes from. This is what we've tried to uh, do F with a certain number of studies we carry out with the two uh, district authorities. That's for micro pollutants and also microplastics, finally. Plastic is, uh, can be seen a lot less, but it has just as big an impact. And here, too, we're just at the beginning of work. We have the first study carried out with Sir Friday on the Adore River. And we began to check whether there were microplastics in our rivers and how they arrived there and uh, what impact they had. This is the first. There was a second study with Toulouse uh, for the uh, district, the effect of microplastics, where they come from, and how we can avoid them. And secondly, how they impact uh, the environment, the biodiversity, especially for fish. We're at the beginning of this study, which we carry with the French uh, Research Center. Microplastics like microplastics are uh, not things that can be measured with the quality of the water. It's, uh, these are probably evolutions that we'll have to uh, implement as we go along uh, with the new European Water Directive. These are things which have not been analyzed yet even though they have a major impact. And then I think that you will receive uh, there's a, a label and an action plan against waste. So whether you're talking about sport or about tourism, you need to be able to implement uh, things at source. But there are experiments, uh, palliative uh, experiments, but it's so expensive it's disproportional, and we need to act at source uh, by reducing the ability uh, of uh, plastics and micropollutants having an impact on water. Uh, short circuits, uh, the circular economy, uh, these are all possible solutions. Uh, recycling, we need to find solutions, technical solutions which uh, enable us to, uh, to, to respond to these stakes, and secondly, for micropollutants, we need to have a, a, a water plan, which uh, Manuel Vargon uh, deployed in the beginning of July, with his vocation is to uh, provide the stakes uh, for limiting the use of pesticides, for uh, renaturalizing uh, waterways, stagnating water. has an effect on uh, uh, seawater, and I, I had before the problem of uh, water quality on beaches, but this is a problem of uh, the water flow. In the Ador uh, uh, 
Bassin, uh, catchment area. We're waiting for... Ex well, uh, uh, Madam said, uh, uh, we need the oceans, and that's why it's important to realize this. I think that we, since uh, COP21, we've uh, come a long way, especially in terms of the uh, the impact of uh, pollution, uh, micropollutants, plastics. Uh, people are now aware, and we're still trying to find effective solutions to. Uh, I don't think we'll convince everybody that was something that was said at the beginning of today. We I can't just simply wait for everybody to turn into a, a, a ecological activist. We need to uh, realize collectively that we need to act. And uh, as a public body, we can uh, act uh, locally with uh, just to have a, an impact on the territory, even though it these solutions don't always have a consensus and impact our daily lives. Thank you. Thank you, Sandrine and Guillaume, for this uh, conclusion, for sharing your initiatives in your respective structures. Now we're going to it's not, comp it's not uh, ended because you can continue exchanging around a drink. So there is a cocktail for all the participants. It's at the rooftop just above. I don't know how you get there. OK, there's a rope and you can go up one by one. No, it's not come share a drink. Yes, come, come. Uh, Let's talk with us. Um, let's continue talking. In the meantime, Laura will tell you about the, the shuttles for those who need it. I would like to thank all the all the participants. Uh, the uh, everybody. See you tomorrow at uh, in our premises at uh, Surfrider Biarritz. Thank you for. Uh, uh, don't forget to uh, 